the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. You will carry strange dimensions of grace and go back with it. Hallelujah. One of the, the principal advocacies of this ministry is the understanding that until a man encounters God, please listen, until you have a personal encounter with the God of the Bible, your Christian experience is barren, useless, deceitful, and destructive. Now listen, I chose my words very intelligently. Barren, useless, deceitful, and then ultimately destructive. Because the danger of approaching spiritual things without a true encounter is that we will have a form of godliness. Hallelujah. But then we will deny its power. We will have a lot of concepts that we believe came from the Bible with no corresponding grace to demonstrate their validity. So with time, our Christian experience will become a mockery on ourselves because we will make bold claims about a God we do not know, talk audaciously about a kingdom we do not understand, and attempt to, to live by principles we do not fully grasp. None of these things will produce results in our lives. Then at the end, we'll find out that our faith is the same with those who never sought God from the beginning. So it is important that as we seek to rise to levels of strength and grace in the spirit, our approach must be according to patterns. Hallelujah. One of the things again that we teach in this place um, are the mysteries of the kingdom. I am absolutely convinced that the growth and the level of leadership and excellence of every believer is tied not just to his knowledge of God but his comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom you hear me say this all the time the mysteries of the kingdom hold the key to dominion in this kingdom there is no other way of exercising kingdom dominion hallelujah whether it is prosperity whether it is working in the anointing of the holy spirit whether it is leadership influence whatever system of the kingdom you want to approach they function by laws everybody say laws and um, all that we do in this place is number one to keep progressing in our encounter the knowledge of the person Jesus and then to understand the principles of the kingdom and then to release an impartation grace upon us to be able to demonstrate that these things we believe are not just stories so when you come for koinonia you expect an encounter with the person christ that encounter has nothing to do with my teaching while i am teaching christ is revealing himself to people are we together now then the principles of the kingdom the keys that produce stars and champions in the kingdom and then an impartation a transference of grace the implication of that is that the transference is what is responsible for activating possibilities in your life that you have not seen that result in your life does not mean it's not available it says you will arise and shine when your light comes hallelujah 
so expect encounters expect revelation understanding accurate dispensing of the principles of God and the goal of the teaching of the principles of God is to do three things number one to challenge our paradigms our understanding to influence our convictions to the end that we lay aside every understanding that is not consistent with the patterns of the kingdom if the word of God cannot gain ascendance to a point where it challenges your understanding and corrects something you know I have so much passion for the understanding of the word of God because in my opinion it is God's justice and mercy to remedy for the inadequacies that came with our backgrounds so i may have had a background that was not very very favorable polygamous family perhaps or a family that has been ravaged by witchcraft and all of that and an option was never given to me to choose whether I want to be part of that system or another. Now, when the word of God comes, it leaves you with a choice to correct faulty foundations and set a new course for yourself, your children, the generation that will come after you, or continue in that error and perish. Hallelujah. The Bible says there remained a rest for the people of God. Hebrews chapter 4, right? Began to talk about the rest. They are the people of God. But there is still a dimension of rest they are yet to enter. And it says let us therefore labor to enter that rest. Hallelujah. So let your, let your attention be very intentional. You must commit yourself. I was very touched when i got information that these gentlemen and ladies were coming all the way from abuja they came all the way with their boss you know came to pay the price for an encounter that's called commitment it's more than desire it's called commitment are we together and um first timothy chapter 4 when you read from verse 14 down to 16 it says meditate on these things what things the truths that have been taught you meditate on these things then it says give yourself wholly not half-heartedly wholly to them it says that your profiting will appear unto men that means your profiting will never appear unto men until there is a level of commitment are we together now yes commitment has always been one of the keys to mastery when you commit yourself you commit your potentials your time your resources and then your results will be commensurate to the commitment hallelujah faith is the name given to your partnership with god as far as the delivery of your expectations are concerned there is a partnership there is a role that you have to play he said good master what must i do to be saved it is within your power to save me but what is my role what must I do to be saved hallelujah scripture says if ye be willing and obedient then it says you will eat the good of the land the good will not come to you just because you have desire there must be willingness there must be obedience there is a path you either follow that path or you remain where you are. It says, ask for the ancient path. You don't have to create one. There is. Ask for the ancient paths. Hallelujah. I teach you these truths because I want your life to produce results. You see, we do not serve God just because of results. However, at a point in your Christian experience, these results validate your pursuit they motivate you and they serve as consolations to your christian experience when jesus saw the fig tree without food he cursed it he said no man eats from you from hence and it withered so when a believer's life becomes 
an episode of failure after failure, defeat after defeat, pain after pain, tragedy after tragedy, there is need to not just probe your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, but probe your understanding of the systems of the kingdom. Because the operation of God is systemic. There are systems. Everybody say systems. Say one more time, systems. There is the governmental system of the kingdom. It is the dimension of the operation of the kingdom that is responsible for allotting rankings and responsibility. Is God's system of authority. Is the system of God that is responsible for promotion. Responsible for the distribution of offices. Is his governmental system. There is the economic system of the kingdom. That is responsible for the allotment of the welfare of the citizens. So you can excel in an understanding of a dimension. And be unfruitful in another dimension. Are we together? You can be an excellent preacher, yet be a very terrible father, a terrible husband. Are we together? You can tap into the dimension of the spirit that is responsible for success and achievement, and yet fail as far as your personal spiritual growth is with God. You can be anointed by tapping into the principles that open the gates of the anointing, but then crash eventually because you have not been open to the dimension that brings in you the character to sustain that anointing. So it's not only important to open yourself to one dimension of the kingdom. You must study the systems of the kingdom. There's no magic about excelling in this kingdom. It's an intentional formula. An encounter first, please listen, in this order. Never begin to study the systems of the kingdom without an encounter with the person, Christ. That's what leads to mysticism and Scientology. Are we together? An attempt to explore the principles of the kingdom outside of an encounter with the person, Christ. In this kingdom, everything revolves around Jesus Christ. Listen, if at any point you are found attempting to explore anything about the kingdom outside of the supervision of jesus christ you are already in error and that's what we call witchcraft he says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you so up front before we explore the mysteries of the kingdom i need to balance this because there is such appetite especially for we the younger people there is such appetite for exploring not just the mysteries of the kingdom but anything mystical we we have grown progressively in this craze for anything that is not widespread information so the understanding that all power belongs to god has erroneously authorized many people to now explore anything so we read zodiac signs we read uh, the books of Moses. We read all kinds of the um, and, um, um, astrology and all kinds of ancient Babylonian Scientology. We mix everything together because we believe in our folly that we can get the correct part of the information and then by our strength balance it. Are we seeing now? So we are attempting to explore realities in the kingdom outside of the direction and the supervision of Christ. This is the difference between what I'm teaching you and a lot of junks that a lot of people try to teach. So there is obsession. When they come out in the morning and they see that the cloud is red, they want to give a, a an astrological and then spiritual explanation. So that obsession for mysticism, every time the word of, the, of God is dispensed with simplicity, those kinds of people reject it. The moment the word is too simple, they say, no, I need something deep. Meaning, I need something surrounded with a lot of mysticism. And oftentimes, we men of God use mysticism to cover for our foundational inferiority and complex. We come from backgrounds where we have hardly been believed. And so we find succor on the strength of possessing informations 
that are not public so when we dispense these informations in our minds we feel we are respected on the strength of our mysticism so we pride ourselves the more mystical we look the happier we are with ourselves that's not the way the kingdom works are we together when jesus came when he taught the word children understood him adults understood him intellectuals understood him if this was designed to reach the whole world then there must be a system of simplicity that surrounds its operation let me tell you the truth over 70 percent of the informations that are being promoted in church are unnecessary for the growth and the excellence of a believer's life trust me the more you know christ the more you see how useless certain informations are that we punish ourselves to believe that until we know these things he said that i may know him so it starts with knowing him then the power of his resurrection the realities that accompany that person the beginning the foundation of a christian journey is not access to mysteries it will lead you into occultism the foundation of a christian's journey is an encounter with the person christ not the kingdom the person of jesus christ not the holy spirit the person of jesus christ not an angel not the 24 elders not the four living creatures none of these things have the ability to give you it's like a compass so the, you know when, when you stand to measure your weight or whatever it is calibrated to zero and it must be calibrated to zero for you to have a correct measurement that's how it is jesus is the beginning he shows you the correct pathway to start your journey now the trouble is there are so many people who teach a lot of mysticisms in the body of christ without a personal revelation of the person christ that was the mistake of isaiah from chapter one to five he was teaching prophesying dispensing the realities of the kingdom but in chapter six verse one the bible says in the year that king uzziah died he said i isaiah saw the lord when he saw the lord at once he no longer was interested in ministry can you imagine a man who he that told was happy to be a prophet he said woe is me i am undone in other words i need to reset this spiritual curriculum altogether. please hear me koinonia hear me and be wise do not ever make a mistake of thinking god will grant you grace and access to people on the strength of mysticism are we together that you can bring a lot of mysticism and explain how moses learned the babylonian intelligence and explain all of those things and come up with archaeological intelligence none of these things in themselves sustain the ability to produce effect you see we do these things and we mock ourselves in church the sick still remain sick the oppressed still remain oppressed in fact at the end of our teaching those who were once confident that they love god do not even know what they believe again no that's not the way it works there should be a level of certainty he said i know whom i have believed i'm not confused i didn't meet an angel i know whom i believe he said and i am persuaded hallelujah i watch preachers and and you know i love the body of christ but then i watch preachers sadly and i see how a number of people become gullible this craze and passion for mysticism any pdf material anything at all that can make you mystical is we pride ourselves around it are we together then we come up with all kinds of teachings the title of my teaching is the reason why michael is called michael now i'm not i'm not being cynical but it's funny how we waste people's time 
and demons laugh at our stupidity as they watch us do the things we do Jesus said this when he was sending the disciples he said heal the sick cast out devils raise the dead cleanse the lepers he said preach the kingdom is that true he sent them with a specific knowledge you see there are all kinds of information on earth but not all of them are relevant for our spiritual growth and development there is a dimension of spiritual knowledge called forbidden knowledge it is not within the curriculum that is given to our dispensation in other words attempting to access it is a waste just like there are certain kinds of knowledge that our dispensation is not yet qualified to receive when this is done then we will have access to each of that tree of life it wasn't to satisfy hunger it was to reveal a dimension of Christ the great prophet of God William Branham I honor him so much even in his death towards the end of his life fell into this error I'm trying to correct for you William Branham stepped into a dimension of the prophetic that only few people have stepped in it's called the creative dimension of prophecy where he would sit in a forest and watch squirrels be created out of thin air and walk just like Elisha the prophet but then towards the end he became philosophical in his approach towards God and he started coming up with a lot of teachings there are people today called the Brahamites those who subscribe to the ideology of William Branham a great man but towards the end of his life he brought a lot of erroneous teachings are we together now yes there's no point telling us some of those teachings but then it was him that began to propose how that Cain was the son of the serpent he gave a teaching that the serpent also slept with Eve so Adam came I mean Abel came from Adam and Cain came from the serpent you see that was his idea and there are all kinds of other teachings great men and women of God around the world but attempting to come up with a lot of teachings that by the time you come around those teachings they will make you diabolic you will no longer see sense in the laws of God it's as if there is a level of haphazardness and discretion in the dealings of God no it's not that way there is a formula that defines the dealings of God with man hallelujah Tonight I want to teach you something that has blessed me. I've taught these principles across in our external ministrations, but I just realized that I've not done that teaching here in the house and the Holy Ghost began to put it in my heart that I should teach it. And so I'm going to be teaching us tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 13 verse 11, please. Hallelujah. In your name, we will rise. I don't know your reign on earth. In your name, we will rise. I don't know your reign on earth. Sing it as a prophecy. In your name, I will rise. One more time. It's in your name we will rise. I don't know. You reign on time. Matthew 13, verse 11.
I'd like us to read. One to read. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given. Sorry, it's not projected. We really apologize. Let's take it again. One to read. 13 verse 11. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. Change the word mystery to secrets. Ready? Read it again. One to read. Please look up. These truths are called secrets, not because God does not want them known. Are we together? The idea of the principles of the kingdom being called secrets has nothing to do with God's um, God's wanting to hide them from people. No. They are called secrets only because the operation of those principles will require the presence of the Holy Spirit to help you understand. He said it is given to you in the kingdom. You who have encountered Christ, it has been given unto you. It's part of the privileges of submitting to the Lordship of Christ to know have access to the mysteries of the kingdom it says but to them who are the them those who are without those who have willfully ignored the person of jesus christ he said to them that access has not been given but to you it has been given say in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus it has been given unto me to know to understand to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom it has been given to me to understand the systems of the kingdom and i will understand i will master these laws and i will reign in life listen ladies and gentlemen i give you a guarantee please hear me i give you a guarantee if you pay attention to these truths your life will look like a God upon the earth. Believe me. The laws of the kingdom are not emotional. They don't have any tribal affiliations or sentiments to them. You're not going to say because I'm a northerner or because I'm from the south or east. No. God is no respecter of persons. Any and everyone at all who will open up himself or herself and pay attention to these truths will rise like an edifice out of any kind of obscurity in the name of jesus christ there are six laws that have changed my life six principles that i have taught and shared there are so many but in recent times i found myself advocating these things and helping the body of christ understand these principles i'm going to run through them very quickly and then we'll pray hallelujah three things will happen to you as i teach number one is that you will have all kinds of encounters number two the lord will grant you understanding i sincerely pray for you that you will have understanding the bible says and open he their understanding that they may understand the scripture meaning until god opens your understanding you will keep hearing stories hallelujah and then number three the supply of grace will come upon your life that ability of the holy spirit that enhances performance may that be your portion in the name of jesus for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory For your glory, be lifted high. Hallelujah. Number one. Is the law that is responsible for unusual grace. Please listen. In the life of a man. 
What principle makes men so powerful? I have met men in my life and I've heard of others. I have followed others who are extremely powerful. There is a strong manifestation of the hand of God and the grace of God upon their lives. And I have seen others who love God sincerely but I've not seen as much grace. Is it just an election of grace? Or is there a pathway a man can follow to the end that you will access heavy dimensions of the hand of God? There is. There is. And I want to show you. Praise the Lord. It's called the law of complete surrender. Please write it down. Complete surrender. This is the first mystery in the kingdom I want to teach you. The secret of unusual grace. Heavy anointings upon men. Men who have access to territories. There is a mystery that governs that operation. It's called complete surrender. The source of my strength, now you. The strength of my life, now you. My hope and my joy, now you. My confidence you. You're the source of my strength you. The strength of my life you. My hope and my joy you. My confidence you. So I Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Except God be with him. What you see in this ministry is the finger, the very finger of God. And we give him all the praise and to him be all the glory. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16. Let's continue. Matthew 16 verse 25 Matthew 16 verse 25 I'm establishing the law of complete surrender Matthew 16 verse 25 for whosoever now listen I want to establish a law whosoever will save his life shall what lose it but whosoever will lose his life listen for my sake not for foolishness not as a result of drinking beer and a car knocks you down whosoever to show how much he's passionate about me will lose his life he says he will gain it please listen in this kingdom we rise up by losing things you do not gain things and rise the extent to which you rise in power the extent to which you rise in grace is called the sacrifice of death death to yourself death to your ambitions death to your appetites and desires death to a life of sovereignty outside of the Christ the more you die to yourself the more your flesh is crucified at the cross the more you are able to tap into untold dimensions of spiritual power listen every man defines the limit of his spiritual possibility as far as accessing the power of God is concerned I may love God you may love God. Listen, the difference between both of us is not just the election of grace alone, but our individual willingness to lay down what defines relevance outside Christ. For the sake, 
he says this one thing i do forgetting everything that is behind he didn't say forgetting bad things everything jesus became lord and christ by his ability to lay down his glory his reputation philippians 2 from verse 5 to 10 he says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus right who although he was equal with god he did not consider it robbery co-equal in power but he laid aside that glory that grace and became a man that would have been enough humiliation and then the bible says he now died the death of a sinner the death being a cause then it says wherefore on the strength of losing his life his personal relevance when jesus came to the earth it was enough for him to say look i am everything but even being humiliated as a man he still submitted to the governing authority of his father he said i can of my own do nothing the word of god speaking the word that created the heavens and the earth he said i can of my own do nothing he said as i see my father do sacrifice so many of us may never get to this realm of power although we may fast although we may pray it's not just by fasting and prayer there is a point you must come to where you will say like john in john 3 31 that i may decrease listen that he may increase there are some of you looking at me here if you had one tenth of the results that god has blessed this ministry with god will never see your face again you see as i'm speaking to you make sure you are hearing the lord talk to you absolute surrender where you have no desire whatsoever to build titles for yourself god is my witness i've said this for years and i'm still saying it i have no desire whatsoever to build an empire joshua selman apostle joshua selman the great man of god the anointed man of god no i have only one desire to see his kingdom come and that my life becomes a mirror not showing myself but revealing an ability greater than me over 70 percent of those who have been blessed by this ministry have never seen me face to face some of you this is the first time you are seeing me face to face you know why because it has always been my desire for christ and him alone to be exalted as a person i'm useless and unnecessary to your spiritual growth i am only necessary on the strength of number one the election of grace and the privilege of representing the person christ that's where i draw my relevance from i'm aware of that so at no point in my christian experience and my journey in ministry will i ever declare independence wanting people to know me outside of the christ but for many of us hidden in our fastings hidden in our prayers hidden in our night vigils hidden in our attending seminars and reading books is such an appetite for for being honored and recognized to an extent that it doesn't matter whether christ is glorified or not we have such desire to be celebrities in the kingdom you are not a celebrity by writing songs and producing albums and doing the way they do in the world you are a celebrity to the degree to which you die and no man sees you they only see the christ it's a realm called galatians 2 20. i have been crucified with christ please listen nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me it says and the life that i live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me please hear me quit this desire 
for vain glory self glorification i'm not saying do not desire honor it is part of the system of the kingdom to honor those who represent christ well he said let them that rule well be given double honor are we together but if that is the foundation of your pursuit and then you now write songs because you want to be a celebrity and show Frank Edwards and the rest that they are not the only ones. You know, and sometimes we men of God teach these things sincerely in church. But we do not realize we are destroying people. In an attempt to motivate people and spur them towards excellence. We try to give them an idea that there is an inner giant within them. That giant is outside Christ. Wake that sleeping giant. And what many people mean is, look, you can rise outside of partnership with Christ. Only know these laws. The foundation of the relevance of the Christian is tied to Christ. Don't forget this. At no point in your life will your independence from God favor you. At no point. In John 21, Jesus was speaking to Peter and he gave him what I define to be the hallmark of spiritual maturity he said when you are young come when you are young in the kingdom you are allowed to go and do everything you want to do but the older and the more mature you become he says someone will hold your hands and will take you even to places you do not want dependence is the hallmark of maturity in the spirit independence and rebellion are communications of self-centeredness and carnality the more matured you become in the kingdom the more your hands will have to be held submission defines maturity in the kingdom thank you hallelujah i have learned this law and it has blessed me never you see a man who has donated himself to god and think that man is at a disadvantage you are joking except if the man did it religiously or he did it carnally or in the course of his journey he was weary and did not finish i have not found one man from scripture who left all to commit himself to the purposes of christ listen i have not found one man who took his life as a trophy and said lord find glory in this life and was not relevant when God called Abraham a traditional worshiper in a land called Or of the Chaldeans. In Genesis chapter 12, he called Abraham and he said, I will make you a great nation and all of that. And then he says, come out of your father's house. In other words, come into a life. Come into a life of dependence. And at the end, he turned a man to a nation. The same thing he did for Gideon. The same thing he did for Moses. The same thing he will do to any man. You've heard me say it and I will repeat it tonight. The Lord told me years ago. He said if you will let men see me. There is nothing I will not give you. Because in God's mind. It doesn't make any difference whether. The virtues are with him or with me. The allegiance does not change. So God can commit to you what is in his hands. Because he knows that it is still his own in your hands. This attitude of ownership. You will never hear me say my ministry. No. My ministry. These are till today. You've heard me say it again and again. I am and, and a lot of people have felt bad. I still feel my body still shakes to look at someone. And call my son in the gospel. A lot of people have said you've never called me son you've never called me daughter because to call someone son or daughter it it, it even looks like I'm, I'm i'm embarrassing myself because compared to where god wants me to be i'm only a step out of the cave yet some of you this is the hallmark of your ministry there is such appetite to surround people with everybody including your father and mother and everybody they are your sons and daughters and we pride ourselves in it this is my church of 20 members. They are all my children. No. I'm showing you a principle that will change your life in everything. My business. So you pay the bills and it kills you. 
my business he said let it not be deuteronomy chapter 18 that when thou art built these houses from verse 14 down to 18 right and you have done this and that that you say my power and the strength of my hands has given me this he said but thou shall remember the lord your god why because you can forget let me tell you success can erode the place of god in the life of a man it's god speaking to us oh god i want power i want the miraculous grace you know i see people i receive all kinds of text messages from people i remember i think two weeks ago one gentleman came uh, was it two weeks or so he came from i don't know which city he sent me a text he said apostle i'm coming to draw everything you carry that he wants a, a quad i think it's um, four is what quadruple right portion and i laughed I said, look at, look at this boy just kidding himself. Because you think you can inherit sacrifice. You can't inherit death. It's, it's a path. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a wheat falls to the ground. That's not a gift. That's a reward. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It abides alone. I can release grace upon you but I cannot give you my secret place I cannot give you the priority I can only pray that grace be supplied and help you understand my convictions but it will be up to you to say Lord this is my job my wife my children my ministry my career I love all of them but I push all of them behind to make you first not just that find a place and and wage yourself in the midst of these things so you have your career usually money is the first money then wife then children then husband then god then politics then something he's just somewhere in the list the jealousy of god will fight anything above him in your life even if he's the one who gave you he will fight it it is his idea that everything in your life only finds relevance to the degree to which it is behind him. So your gifts and talents are only relevant to the degree to which he is above them. Your prosperity is only relevant to the degree to which he is above them. Is God speaking to us? Open your mouth and pray in one minute and say, Lord, I make you my priority. Please pray. My priority not an instrument of relevance lord you are my priority are you praying koinonia my priority not money not fame not marriage not children not education they are all important don't get me wrong but they are useless the moment Christ is not above them. Believe me. Sooner or later you will learn the vanity of life outside of Christ. He, is, he does not add taste to life. He gives it meaning. Jesus Christ is not the salt of the earth. Jesus Christ is life. He does not add taste to your life. No. Jesus Christ does not add. He introduces life to you. He said this is the testimony. That God has given us eternal life. Then he says and this life is in his son. He who has the son has eternal life. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen never give god your remaining time you spend your time looking for money looking for wife husband children then eventually you feel guilty because usually you will not get any much result so you now run to christ and say okay god i know that you are not happy with me let me give you one day no it's not about giving god one day of a retreat god does not want one day he doesn't even want once a week he wants everything if he's not Lord of all, then everything that stands his way is your God. 
Praise the Lord. Is God speaking to us? The law of absolute surrender. Jeremiah 29, please. 13 and 14. What are the benefits of God being a priority in the life of a man? Jeremiah 29, when you read from verse 13, it says, And ye shall seek me, listen, and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Sincerely speaking, please hear me. Look up, look up. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This half-hearted commitment towards God that we do one leg in and one leg out. When it's favorable, I love him. When it's not favorable, I don't love him. You will never find the God I serve that way. You must give him everything completely. It can't be God and something else. No. The, the might and the jealousy of God puts him in a class all by himself. Are we together? He says, you will find me only when you seek me with all your heart. With all your heart. With all your heart. The problem is we are not seeking God with all our hearts. We are seeking what he can give. A number of us are gathered here. If I begin to prophesy now, and I say, oh, stand up. Your name is this, this and that. Many of us will be happy and say, thank God I came for today's service. You see, because that's really what you want. Man of God, what is my problem? What do I do about it? So we have created all kinds of systems in the body of Christ to cover our half-hearted following God. Are we together? We follow God half-heartedly. When demons start oppressing us, we look for a man quickly and just drop money. And because the man needs the money, he will not rebuke you. He will now collect it and say, go, it is done. It's not done. Let me tell you, it is not done. You will go back and those spirits will oppress you. Because this, what you are giving is bribe. There is no amount of seed you give a man of God that will cover the place that only your total commitment to God are we together? Yes. And pastors, stop collecting money from people and watching their spiritual lives go down and tell them, go, it is done. I'm telling you now, if anybody has told you that it is not done, there is a lot more to do. Sow your seed. Bless a man of God. But don't come to bribe a man to say, oh, man of God, pray for me. Me too. I, I'm so busy. You know, we are not like you. We really don't have that time to pray. If you don't have the time to pray, you don't have the time to live. If you don't have the time to study the word and know God, then please pray that your life will be given to someone who is serious with God so that at least maybe you can go to heaven or so. But when you are in this earth, you live by the systems of the kingdom. hallelujah nothing irritates me like seeing young people who are not passionate about God you see a guy stand and then you hear him talk and there is nothing kingdom in his conversation no love for God man of God how are you may God bless you in this missionary journey he doesn't even know he, he's trying to use Christian languages to look spiritual he says as you are helping us in this vineyard in this world where did you keep what nothing in the kingdom has altered your communication but they know every song they know every show they know everything that's the person saying he doesn't have time they know every football team right they know the winners of uefa champions league they are hoping that cashless uh, mastercard cashless will take them to the finals of uefa champions league they are hoping all these things will happen and they have no knowledge of God. Tell me one scripture where God said he will prosper you. You don't know. But you are there advocating for a man who will never tell you thank you. You see, we have to straighten our thinking. Please hear me. God is not a herbalist. A herbalist is not concerned about relationship. He's only concerned about practices. You don't even need to know the name of the herbalist. He just says, turn around drop your chicken, drop your goat, drop the money, go. It is done. You don't know his name. But when you come to God and say, God, I stretch my hands, he pushes your hand away and says, give me your heart. Let's start with your heart before we talk about your hand. Hallelujah. 
Number two. The second key secret of the kingdom I'll be sharing with you tonight. We'll have to hurry up. It's found in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Please, let's hurry up. Proverbs 23 verse 7. I'll read it. For as he thinketh in his heart, the word heart there can also be translated mind. So is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, please look up. So is he. There is a law in the kingdom that realities are first formed within and from the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical. Please listen. That your life is only a looking mirror. And when you want to alter the course of your life, you don't alter it by changing things physically. You alter it by changing something within. Are we together? Imagine that this projector is a big mirror and you saw yourself and maybe there was dust on your face and then you are trying to chuck your hand in the mirror to clean the dust is that wisdom that's the same thing that you are doing when you try to correct something in your life physically without correcting it from your mind because everyone every one of you under the sound of my voice is a slave to your conditioning your paradigm your ideology are we together now i'm doing what i'm doing right now because there are certain sets of convictions that make me believe that this is the way to live a relevant life are we together when a gentleman sacks his jeans down and holds it go in his hand it's not just that there is a spirit oppressing him there is a mindset are we together there is an understanding within him that defines success to him and lets him know that if you want to succeed these are the things you do so he's a slave you see the body is an obedient instrument the body will obey your convictions hundred percent your body will move you only in the direction of your convictions sadly not your intentions so you may be hearing what i'm saying now you want to change but there is a conviction in you that would not allow you change listen this is why people remain poor this is why people remain sick this is why people remain failures they hear the word and they're ah i'm happy i've had this word but that was just their intention their true conviction is still what came from their village what took 20 years to become a stronghold in your mind is god speaking to us so when you come to the kingdom as the word of god is being taught you know what i'm doing to you there is a replacement going on in your mind are we together new ideas that are now consistent with the way of god are superimposing the ideas that came from culture the ideas that came from the our being victimized by reason of our post-colonial the side effect of being under the colonial rule that mindset of servitude as the word of god is coming is bringing new ideas and all of a sudden your concepts are changing you who would have been rebellious about the things of god now can sit down in church just like they gave the testimony our abuja people right how that someone who was not in the faith is now sitting down and burning for god three years ago that person had a conviction an ideology that informed him otherwise or her otherwise and now they found something you listen when you get born again the next assignment of the holy spirit is to take the principles of the word of god in partnership with your obedience and that there be a progressive replacement of wrong paradigms wrong ideologies are we together if you are smoking there is an understanding making you do it the issue is not to say stop smoking you cannot stop until the paradigm is changed and the spirit that keeps that paradigm effective leaves you when a man beats his wife something told him that's the way to keep your wife obedient 
and usually he would have interacted with people from his village and they said the way we, we have done this before you were born don't let ladies talk nonsense when they do anything beat the living daylight out of them do it once twice maybe three times or four and i'm telling you you have everything settled so you you are born again but you carry your village with you god wants to open you up to a beautiful life maritally but your village is interrupting it please i like you to make a commitment that you will have no loyalty to any mindset that is not of the christ no matter how long you've held on to it when you come before the lord you must lay it down in the name of jesus christ do you know why we resent ourselves and we hate our cultures i'll tell you why we hate people from different cultures because of what we think comes with the culture are we together a prevalent mindset so if i say a man from plateau state or kaduna state or kogi state or Ibom or lagos or an Igbo man we associate these people with certain things ranging from irresponsibility to anger to loss for money to pride and so on and so forth to promiscuity but those things are ideologies they are conditionings listen the kingdom is another culture greater than your culture you can choose to remain an Igbo man or become a citizen of the kingdom you can choose to remain a northerner together with the strings of irresponsibility associated with our territory or you can come into the kingdom and let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus are we together conditioning so you love God but that mindset of being a champion is still eating you up so the moment you are in church and a man of God is preaching you try to outshine them that one is not God you are anointed but you are still a victim of a conditioning that you are only a celebrity when you are the only one doing what you are doing so you push every other person and make sure nobody has an, an opportunity to grow listen please hold on do you know that many of us pastors some of the things we introduce to members that we brag about and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit that told us it's not the Holy Spirit there is where the Holy Spirit stopped and our villages continued but we mix everything and say it was the Holy Spirit are we together I can be angry and call you stupid and instead of accepting that look this, this one is a spirit. This is not the Holy Ghost. But I'll say, look, it's, it's just the zeal of the Lord. What do you expect? I have an apostolic anointing. Instead of being humble to admit, are we together now? Yes. Or the moment God reveals to me that you have one million in your account, I'm supposed to pass. He didn't say I should talk to you. But something in my territory that that stimulates an appetite for material gain this one has nothing to do with god again i took advantage of prophetic access and saw one million and i'm drawn by my lust now you won't know because the atmosphere is heavy people are falling under the anointing so you assume it's god that is doing it and i walk up to you and say young man stand up you have one million like, hi you say yes exactly one million yes it came last week yes go and send it to my account now listen i will i will be so bold about it you will never believe it came from me i'll say look don't think i'm looking for your money just go and do this thing for your own good and the guy will run and transfer it and i'll say thank you jesus now does that mean it doesn't mean i don't love the lord but there is a mindset that is mixing with ministry are we together and if it wants it must change that's why there are people who don't mind getting anything you love god but then eventually when there are bills that need to be paid you will create some kind of prophetic platform and say where are so 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 and so people who must do a and b and c and we make it look like it was god no those ministries are suffering because of their lack of understanding the financial principles of the kingdom. And they will have to manipulate a system to cover up for their lapse of not understanding one system of the kingdom. Please, I'd like you to pray for one minute. 
and say lord any conditioning in me that is responsible for my failure no matter how long i've held on to it let it go tonight please pray pray i'm sharing with you principles that will change your life please pray some of you that's why you may never enter a godly relationship any relationship you enter you love god you are tongue talking but there is an understanding you have about relationship about marriage that will never allow you be in a meaningful relationship some of you do not have friends because there is a thinking there is a paradigm it came with your village the validity the lifespan of any good friend in your life is two weeks something you do will drive them away take responsibility and pray stop saying it's just demons pray and say lord i realize that your word says to guard my heart with all diligence for out of it proceeds the issues of life regardless of my village and my territory regardless of where i come from there is a behavioral pattern that is tied to inferiority i have never realized that i'm behaving that way because there is a hidden sense of low esteem low self-esteem i have brought it into ministry i have brought it into business i brought it into my home and is destroying my home let it go in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray some of us are very cynical we are very critical you criticize everybody you are a sadist your communication is always on the negative take responsibility and accept tonight that there is a mindset that is making you behave that way and cry to the lord for change don't say we are all like that in our family pray there is a mindset that keeps you greedy there is a mindset that makes you not to be a giver there is a mindset that makes it look like tithing is a gimmick from men of god to collect your money and you remain poor there is a mindset that makes you think your entire finances will come from salary and is killing you right now pray and say lord any understanding any paradigm i have held on to that is not consistent with your path i i become disloyal to it tonight hallelujah number three proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 7 is god blessing us already please learn these keys and use them and watch the mountains before you melt like wax before the fire hallelujah some years ago i found out listen that every time i had challenges in my life any kind of challenge it was difficult for me to manage it i didn't know what to do as a leader whenever i was faced between decisions very major decisions i didn't know how to manage some of the confusions that i experienced until i found what i'm about to teach you if you learn what i'm about to teach you now every time you are confused you will find your way out ready proverbs chapter 3 please from verse 5 learn this the third law the key to receiving divine strategies from God. The key to receiving supernatural direction. A way out of a, a situation that should eat you and destroy your life. That when men say this is it, there is no way out. Hear me people of God, there is a way out. If you know what to do. It's found in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. And it says trust in the Lord with all your heart right it says and lean not on your own understanding the next verse is where the key is in all your ways how many how many in all your ways it says acknowledge him what is the blessing behind that process and he shall direct <sighs> until that experience happens your part is crooked he says whenever you get to a point in your life where there is no way out humanly there is a key the key is to acknowledge him 
I know it looks simple until you apply it. Are we together? Let me tell you how to acknowledge someone. I know that I've given this example, but please say Jimmy Stanza. Look at this. If this guy is the CEO of a multi-billion dollar bank, are we together? And he has come in our midst right now. And I want to introduce him. Listen, let me show you how to acknowledge a man. I would start something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, in our midst today, we are privileged to have a Jimmy Adekbe here. In 1998, he got award for most innovative entrepreneur. In 1999, he got award for the most customer-driven company. In 2005, he got, I begin to list all his achievements. Listen, are we together now? And then I'll tell you, look, it's a privilege to have him here. Please, everyone, we cannot continue until we recognize this rare gem with a standing ovation. Celebrate this person. I have acknowledged him. Let me tell you what that does. It puts pressure on him to repeat what you just acknowledged. Are we together now? I cannot say he got this award, this award, and I say, please come and tell us good evening. And then he comes up and blows his credentials. Have you seen people you honored come on stage and you see how they are under pressure to preserve the honor you have given them? Your honoring and acknowledging them put pressure on them to represent. That's what you do to God. So when I get to a crossroad where there is no way out, and men say like David in Psalm 3. He said many a day that rise up against me. Many a day that say where is his God? All of a sudden you forget about the problem. And you say where is the God that parted the Red Sea with his nostrils? You are acknowledging him. Are we together? You start listing the things he did. That's what David did to Goliath. Where is the God that delivered me from the bear? Where is the God that delivered me from the lion? And he was putting pressure on the integrity of God. In other words, God, your name is about to go to the mud. And I am shouting it before men that you are the one that did it before. And all of a sudden, he shall make straight your path. That's what the Bible says. I show you a secret of endless victory. Because you see, as you rise... There are many people who will pray for your downfall. Not because they hate you. Your rise is equivalent to their failures. Because it kills every excuse. And so in their minds, they will be hoping things will go bad. To justify that your success is nothing special. And at a point, you will be at a crossroad. When you get to that point, then you will open your mouth and begin to worship him. And call him all kinds of names. It's a secret I've learned. I will shut the door for one hour, two hours. I'm just worshiping him. And say, Lord, I thank you. I remember at so, so, so time when you came through for me. I will sing of your mercies. I remember the day when I did not have five naira. Is it today that I need one million that you cannot give me? I'm acknowledging him. I, I mount pressure on his integrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what you should do. You mount pressure on God's integrity by acknowledging him before the forces of darkness. He healed you of HIV. Now cancer wants to destroy you. And people say, you know, I've always suspected this person was not healed. This koinonia, people just come and lie on stage here. HIV healed. Just like that. As if we are stupid, we went to school. Now cancer is eating you and you know humanly speaking that this cancer is progressing. Let me tell you how to deal with it. Forget about the cancer and go back and dance before God. Close your door. Call him all the names that will put pressure on him. I call you healer. Your name is healer. You are the healer to me. I call you healer. Your name is Healer. Healer you are and Healer you be. Listen, when you mount pressure on Him, listen, 
you know the way people behave sometimes we behave as if god you wrote an exam where you wrote nonsense and it came out a now you are in final year and your supervisor looks at you and says if i'm in this department you will not graduate and you are about to depress yourself no go and lock the door and say in hundred level where is the man that brought 3.5 for me regardless of this oh god listen i'm not motivating you i'm giving you a key to get out of confusion and make men swallow their words I pray you believe what I'm teaching you because a day will come you will need it are we together you are confused three years no child and everybody is talking saying if you if you claim that you love God where is the child and then you sit down depressing yourself and say but God you serve Abba am I not serving you you will never get a miracle that way there is a law lean not on your own understanding he says in all your ways acknowledge 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 in one minute can you open your mouth and acknowledge him mention the things he has done in your life before please open your mouth i survived cancer in 99 i survived financial crisis in 2007 is it today I will lack food to eat where is the God of heaven if he gave me a husband will he not give me a child if he gave me a job will he not give me promotion if he granted me grace to graduate will he not give me a job if he gave me life will he not change my genotype from SS to AA acknowledge him before Goliath my rent has expired by Friday if I don't pay they will throw me out Lord where are you last year at the dying minute my rent came I acknowledge you ah, yeah, 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 yeah. the mighty God you are the mighty God the great I am hallelujah hallelujah you are the mighty God you are the great I am hallelujah come on acknowledge him before every trouble in your life you are the mighty God the great I am hallelujah you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, listen. When you grow in this law, there are some challenges you will not even pray about again. Because how do you start saying God is not faithful? When the challenges stand before you, there are too many testimonies to make you think about them so what made you cry yesterday will no longer make you cry today listen let me tell you you know why men are bold in the kingdom some of us are bold because we have gone through hell and high water i'm telling you there's nothing you can think about that we've not gone through so when it's like a man who has entered prison and came out entered prison came out entered prison then one day you tell him, I'll take you to prison. He'll just look at you and say, you are joking. Go and ask your warder. His name is Philip. Ask him whether he knows Joshua. And at the end, you have nothing. Listen, Satan thrives on your fear. He knows that our memories are so short. We forget too early. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Please lift your voice in one minute to the shame of the devil and say lord you are faithful the marriage will still happen open your mouth and pray i will still be a landlord i will still hold my certificate 
that job will still come Kabarata Shapatakata Lekete Preskele Baba Supplies will come from heaven Men may laugh at me But there is a God that sits in heaven Are you praying? It's part of the meeting. Challenge your fear. Don't run away from it. Who are you down mountain? Where were you when God healed me? I really want you to acknowledge him. I really want you to acknowledge him. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Reliable God. Reliable God. Open your mouth in one minute. Call that challenge by name and tell it I will walk upon you. Come on, go ahead and pray. Don't be afraid. Call it by name. Look it in the eye and say, Barrenness. One day you will be my testimony. Oh yes, oh yes It doesn't come to kill Hallelujah Hallelujah God bless you Please give God a shout of praise and sit down God bless you Please be seated Hallelujah. Take this key. Go back with it. And what challenges fear you? Fear you. Because you'll find out that nothing is as big as it looks. Let me tell you, I've gone through too many things in my life to tell you no challenge can kill by itself until you direct the gun and shoot it at yourself. I have confidence in you, Jesus. I have confidence in you, Savior. I have confidence in you. Anytime and any day, I have confidence in you. Jesus, Jesus. Let me tell you something. The next time you see men laughing at you, don't worry. There is already a scripture. It says, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Rejoice not over me. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, Do I fall? Yet I will rise. There is a mechanism in the kingdom that remedies for it. Aya. Jesus died, but he only died for three days. He had resurrected. Others were talking about his death. On his way to Emmaus, 
they were busy discussing the man who died and he said gentlemen i'm already i have, I have a reason this is outdated curriculum that's how some people will sit down while they are discussing and saying ah this lady now now wow i don't know uh, while they are discussing your text will just come my god has done it again the miracle worker has done it again please sit down you see it is this understanding that can make two people come again anybody come it is this understanding come that can make two people walk with me walk through life someone stands at a point where people say he cannot cross and another person continues going because there is something this guy knows they at a point they were at the same level but while this guy was praising his way to the next dimension this one was complaining listen let me teach you something the bible says in acts chapter 16 listen that paul and silas they held them bound four guards even if the chains break those guards will kill you the bible says they prayed and they sang it was allowed and the prisoners had them is it in your bible all of a sudden the bible says there was an earthquake it hit the prison this is the part i like it says and all doors opened how many doors it's in your bible it says when they sang and the earthquake came all doors open you can praise your way out of any pain lord you are so good you are worthy of all my praise lord you are so good you are exalted as the lord most high Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. Just hurry up, sir. So sit down, sit down, sit down. So we we'll hurry up. I tell you, this thing fired my spirit myself. So after ten years, he's still rising. As if the devil does not exist. I watched a video of Bishop Oyedeko this morning preparing his congregation. That was before their 35th anniversary. 35 years of living as if Satan does not exist. And we had a ministration on Sunday. The 35th anniversary was this, was the last Sunday. I made sure I streamed and I followed before I went for the meeting. While I was bathing, I took my laptop. It was streaming so that I would hear from the bathroom in our hotel room before I went out. Kenneth Copeland was preaching. And then I was listening. Before Kenneth Copeland came, they danced their way around the stage to the shame of the devil. And I saw his wife, who once died, but now alive, dancing together, strong and alive. Our mother was dancing to the shame of the devil. When you dance before your enemy, you frustrate them. Please, stop wasting your tears. You have cried before every other person but God. I forbid you from crying before men. There is nothing you are going through that is new under the sun please hear me until you find the key that opens that door you may remain in that captivity forever number what the law of mastery and competence let's hurry up proverbs 18 verse 16 the fourth law i want to teach you secrets of the kingdom the law of mastery and competence proverbs 18 verse 16 the gift of a man makes room for him. Please come. I have to use them. Three of you, any three of you, just come. 
Watch this. I want to illustrate this scripture. Watch this. Call this the table of greatness and the table of life. The space is already full. There is no space for anyone. Are we together? Anybody who must go to the table of greatness must show what he's taking along with him. So the Bible says the concept of something for nothing is armed robbery. There must be something you must carry, your contribution to life. And here's how the Bible puts it. The gift of a man, watch this, will make room for him. Are you seeing that? There was no space, but your gift will push and create a space for you in life. The key to mediocrity is to want everything and contribute nothing. Mediocrity and hardship in life stems from a mentality that wants everything done for you but with no contribution to life your relevance is tied to your contribution to the purposes of god and the betterment of humanity are we together i was teaching at a kingdom wealth summit in joss and i said any man that ever says preachers should not be rich god will punish him you know there are people who especially when they look at some of us who are young they just say forget about all these young boys so they are all idiots just leave them they know what they are doing and they give an idea like these people are fraudulent they are drug barons they are this and that and that or 419 people know the measure of your worth and your greatness in life hear me please is tied to your contribution are we together you pay a carpenter 5,000 naira for fixing your door because that's how much you perceive his contribution to be. But you pay a pilot 500,000 from the day he graduates. He starts collecting 500,000. You know why? Because 175 people are trusting their destinies for one hour and he's the one driving it. And they are paying him and saying, you better make sure you read well. To carry the destiny of presidents prime ministers royalties politicians flying is something that you can't do anything about you just pray if the pilot sleeps or he's careless or something happens you are gone so they pay him five hundred thousand for taking that risk when they are carrying out a neurosurgery you pay between 3.5 to maybe 8 million because of the enormity of what that doctor is doing are we together yes listen our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contributions and our service i know why god is blessing me as a preacher it's not because i'm preaching the gospel it's because i'm adding value to lives my value may be spiritual if you think it's easy to cast out devils, try it. If you think it's easy to look at a sick body and say, be healed, and he goes to the hospital and finds out that HIV has left him, you do it. Let me tell you, if your anointing is only for um, children, fruit of the womb is enough to employ you for your lifetime. Because that is, that is a contribution. Now the question I want to ask you is, every man can know where you stand by how much you are contributing. It's wickedness to demand millions when your contribution has not matched that level. There's no point praying. Are we together? Yes. As I stay in the secret place and I learn more about the mysteries of the kingdom, I am equipped by grace to contribute more and as i contribute more different kinds of rewards come back now that's not my motivation that's why you don't pay me for teaching but whether i sell it or it's given free i am authorized to be rewarded listen your greatness in life is tied is a direct measure 
of your contribution. If at any point in your life, you are not satisfied with your level, as far as greatness is concerned, then it means you have to do something to your contribution. Whose life is becoming better because you are alive? Every day I get up, someone's life is changing because I'm alive. And you wonder why somebody will bless me? Is that not wickedness? You type a letter for a man for one month. He gives you 100,000. You call yourself a secretary. I'm changing the mindsets of people and changing the mindsets of their generation. And someone sows one million and you say it's wickedness. Think about it. And we have all these, these junk people who carry typewriter, carry their laptops and say men of God are wearing this and that and doing this and not doing anything because to them, they think we are just joking on stage. And the person who is talking did not sell his Android device to give mission field. But he's saying the man of God should sell his watch or his car. Let me tell you, the fivefold ministry is secondary to no other ministry on earth. The second most noble call after the call of ministry is the call of a monarch. Then presidents of whatever nation. The president is only there for four years. After four years, he's stripped of his authority and relevance. Only a monarch is close to a true man of God. Irrelevance. Please make no mistakes to think genuine men of God are nuisance to society. Go to a seminar and find out how much you will pay for what I'm teaching you now. And see the millions of naira that you will have to pay for your mindset being corrected. And those guys do not have the grace, the anointing equivalent to help you. Our greatness in life is not measured by connection. It's measured by our contribution. So you can know right where you are seated, how far you are in life. And not be angry when you see another person. I've not slept I've not slept properly I think maybe in the last one or two weeks because we've been traveling it was about a week since I was in Zaria we returned back yesterday returned back had to just take my bath and rush for school of ministry was with them till in the evening and I returned back this morning had a lot of things to do we we're supposed to be off to the airport tomorrow to Ibadan but then I was happy hearing that um, the program has been shifted that's contribution, brothers and sisters. That's contribution. A Jimmy's wife made cake for me. She makes cakes. Beautiful cakes. That's her contribution. I will pay her because I cannot bake it. The day I'm tired of paying her, I learn how to bake it. Are we together? Let me tell you why many people are poor in the kingdom. You are not contributing anything. So whoever you must receive from, you have to give something. Are we together? Watch this. Please lend this. This is a little money. Let me use it for an example. I have this money. Just hold this. Hold this money. Watch this. This is life. Whoever can contribute to life must benefit from it. Financially and otherwise. I'm just using this to represent fulfillment. Are we together? Now, they pay me salary. Please give me back. They pay me. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. They pay me salary. Are we together? I'm not providing any service. So I go to someone to fix my car. He's contributing. He takes from the salary. I go to the market woman who had enough sense to risk herself and sit down in the market. I pay her. Are we together now? All kinds of things are happening to me. I now, because I'm not a practitioner of the word, I'm falling sick. I'm not typing. I think pastors are idiot. What happens? The devourer is destroying me. The remaining part of the salary goes to the doctor. Watch this. Are we listening? What is it to me? Nothing. This is a measure of how much I've contributed to life. Nothing. That's why it always finishes. Are we together? There's no magic about satisfaction and greatness. The day I create something, 
that forces him to give me back my money he will need it so he will come to me and give me back something i'm doing will make her bring it back something i'm doing will make it bring it back what is that something if you don't have it stop wondering why you are poor our rewards in life both in terms of money honor and the sense of fulfillment is tied to your contribution i will never feel inferior in life because if i do not carry any other thing i have an anointing i have an anointing that the nations need and they will need it forever it is needed in the morning the afternoon and the evening the precepts of the kingdom that have been communicated to me there is a demand for it that's why you are gathered here that's why not even the rain took you back to your house are we together it's a measure of how much you need this please hear me begin to sharpen your gifts and abilities and tell yourself i'm rising to that position of greatness i will take something in my hands that will veto my background and open the doors of greatness for me is god speaking to someone now there are doctors here the moment they graduate for those who are student doctors there is a job for them because the amount of frustration from disobeying the word of god has increased their market in the norm the amount of tranquilizers that are consumed every time high blood pressure now affects teenagers good business for doctors darkness shall cover the earth what do you have if i call you right now please three of you stand up one two three and i tell you what do you have to contribute to life that will make you relevant it is wickedness to want to stand here with nothing to contribute so i come to you and you give me the word of god and change my mind you are blessed i come to you and you give me a sense of leadership and innovation you are blessed i come to you and um maybe you solve my security problems and then you come to me and i said don't worry I'm, I'm here i mean it's just a, it's just a political thing that's wickedness listen your greatness is tied to your gifts the gift of a man when discovered when refined please sit down and when deployed will make room for him scriptures cannot be broken has nothing to do with background has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender has nothing to do with territorial limitations your gift has equal value in every territory i love people i admire them but not intimidated by any because the gift of god in me does not need refrigeration i don't need electricity for it to come up are we together if you go to the filling station and there's no light you will kill there because they need electricity are we together now if you want a photocopying machine and light goes off and there's no gen nothing for you but bring a demon possessed person whether i'm sleeping or I'm, I'm awake that spirit is living at that point bring somebody whose mind is messed up i can get him born again and teach him the precepts of the kingdom that's value you may not be called into the fivefold ministry are we together but your value will change the money in your hand your value will change everything in your life please write it down i have an assignment this week to discover every gift god has put in me and to serve my generation with that gift and exit myself out of the realm of inferiority and pain and competition we compete with ourselves we hate ourselves there's no need for that there is enough space in fact life is still needing great men are we together life is still needing great men there are people thank you there are people who are looking for this die hard there was a day 
we looked for this it never came i only wanted 30 naira out of this it didn't come because i was not contributing anything substantial yet i wanted to be blessed it was against the law of god but today it cannot stop coming to me even if i drive it it will not go why value for as long as there is one devil on earth i will not be poor for as long as there is one person's mind that needs to be straightened it's called value please hear me do you know the holy ghost is within you and his presence makes you valuable the presence of the holy ghost gives you the ability to provide supernatural solutions to different dimensions of life's problem you should be fulfilled but you watch how many men are frustrated in our society they get up in the morning and they are angry bus conductors civil servants who are angry going to do a job they don't like everybody angry we vent it at our husbands vent it at our wives on serious pastors vent it at their members we are going to stop here and pray the gift of a man makes room we'll continue next week please rise up and let's pray he's the holy ghost spirit of the living god He's the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. He's the Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. The changing everything in obedience to you. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. You're the Holy Ghost. Of the living God, you're the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. You're changing everything in obedience. Prayer point number one. Lord, I'm leaving this level forever. On the strength of the mysteries you are giving me. Lift your voice and pray. I leave this level forever. I leave this level forever. There is a level of the anointing that I need to step into. Total surrender is the key to that level. There is a level of relevance for the kingdom that I need to step into. Your value, your contribution is the key to that level. There is a level of transformation that I need in my life. The key is to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. To have your ideologies and paradigms change. Make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray and say, Father, from tonight anything that exalts itself above you in my life no matter what it is i bring it down to its rightful place lift your voice and pray it could be ministry it could be business lord i come against that thing stopping the anointing from multiplying in my life stopping my ranking in the spirit Pray every idol taking the place of God in my life. I come against it. 
I come against it. I come against it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray and challenge every paradigm. He said, pulling down every stronghold, stronghold. Something here is creating imaginary giants in your life. Something here is creating imaginary giants. When light comes, you will find out that it was never a giant. I like you to cry and say, Lord, beyond my culture, change my mind. Beyond my exposure as a Nigerian, may your word challenge my paradigms, my ideology that came from my failures, that came from my background, that came from my village, my African, uh, the, the fact that I'm a, I'm a Nigerian, the limitation that came with my territory. As we behold him in a mirror, we are changed. We are changed from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final prayer point. You are going to call for every dormant gift in you. Some of you are sitting in an ocean, but you are begging for a cup of water. Where is that gift that will end poverty in my life? Where is that gift that will end inferiority? Oh God, reveal it in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. That ability of the spirit. Our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution our rewards in life our rewards in life our relevance in life our greatness in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution lift your hands as I pray for you hallelujah I've said it again and again koinonia will build you to be to become a complete kingdom ambassador not just that you are anointed and your finances are suffering not just that you are doing well financially and failing in relationships not just that you are doing well in relationships and failing intellectually there can be complete balanced growth. You can be a multi-millionaire for the kingdom, yet not carried away by its influence in your mind. And you can be passionate about the kingdom and what it represents. Having a personal relationship with God and then excelling in family, excelling in leadership, becoming an agent of national transformation. It says, Savior shall arise out of Zion. And he said they shall judge the mount of Esau. I pray for you. In the name that is above all names. And by the power of the Holy Ghost. The kind of encounter. You have never had with the Holy Ghost. I pray in this season. Step into that level of encounter. Step into that level of encounter. Step into that level of encounter. An encounter that will take your prayer life, your word life, to a dimension you have never seen. I release upon you the grace for that encounter. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 28. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 28. It says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell uh-huh 29 
and are two sparrows not sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father verse 30 it says but the hairs of your head are numbered i hope i'm on the right scripture find for me that scripture let's go to jeremiah 29 13 and 14 but find for me the scripture that says we have left all to follow you the apostle said but let's look at this one while we look for that and ye shall seek me this is one of the most powerful revelations about this encounter you shall seek me and only find me when you search for me with how many all your heart your entire being must pant for me you will seek for me with your reputation you will seek for me with your intelligence your knowledge and everything that means if you claim to seek god and you do not find him there is something still alive in you the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 6, I believe verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, something must die for you to see. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw. In the year that my pride died, I saw. In the year that my ego died, I saw. In the year that my agenda died, I saw. Please keep that scripture there. We'll go back to Matthew 19, but please let's go back to Isaiah 6. In the year that my ambition died, I saw. There is a price to see the Lord. The price is that that king must die. Whatever is Lord of your life is your own Uzziah. If you do not sustain the ability to let it die, you will not see the Lord. Hallelujah. The motif of a man's heart must be purged must be vetted for you to do business with god in this kingdom again i repeat the price for all of god is all of you not your offering not your money the price for all of god is all of you this is one of the fundamental laws that god taught me that if you are able to die to self die to your ambition to die does not mean to not focus on them. To die means to demote them until Jesus becomes enthroned. Are we together now? God does not intend to take these things out of your life. What I'm teaching you is what you bring them. Remember in Genesis chapter 28, Jacob made a very big mistake. He had an encounter with God and yet he had so many things in his heart. He could not benefit from that encounter even though he was at the gate of heaven. But then he suffered for many years in the house of Laban. By the time we get to chapter 32, here's what the Bible says. That Jacob dismissed his wives, go. Jacob dismissed his cattle, go. When he was alone. That's the price. When he was alone. It didn't mean he was irresponsible. They were still his own. But he said go go away when he was alone then a man came and he fought him and he began to wrestle with him and he said bless me and he said you are breaking the law i want to bless you but you are complete in yourself the only way to bless you is i must empty you and he touched the whole of his tie so that he becomes incomplete without god the moment you are complete without god you do not need him again he becomes the completer of your destiny. He touched his tie. Your stability now depends on his assistance. You never can be stable without him again. And he called it a blessing. That is how I bless people. I bless people by destabilizing them without me. I bless people by creating a system around their life where I become the completer of their lives. And then the Bible says, he said, what is your name? Jacob, a cheat, a supplanter. He says, thou shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and with men, and you have prevailed. And the Bible says, he blessed him, and the sun arose, and he called that place Peniel, the face of God. I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. 
the law of complete surrender ask anyone who is mightily used by God today they will tell you they did not start their journey looking for ministry please listen carefully they didn't start their journey looking for fame or for power it was a blind pursuit for spiritual things God it is either all of you or nothing else that's how they encountered power that's how they encountered grace it was said of Apostle Babalola he was strolling in the wilderness and suddenly fire from heaven responding to his hunger it was not his plan to be some great apostle but there are many people from the beginning of the work you already have p and protocol and you are planning how your fame will go around sorry this is not how god does business with men don't just pray for a man's anointing pray for his hunger pray for his sacrifice pray for the administration of death that happened Power does not just come. God is not a herbalist. You don't just speak and things happen just because you are a Christian. There is a track record. There is blood dripping upon the altar. Listen. You want to lift your voice and things begin to happen? It's more than an impartation. Now, the grave where death ends is also where resurrection starts if you want to resurrect you will still have to enter the grave you can't be resurrected when you are outside the grave the condition for resurrection is you must be inside the grave now i'm not a medical doctor and forgive me if i say something that is wrong i'm asking for forgiveness now in advance but i hear that there are certain drugs if you don't have that sickness and you take them they have a way of it's like they almost make you have that sickness before they treat it so if you say lord i want to be alive in you and you are alive the first assignment of the grace that comes upon you is to kill you by the time you die to yourself kill you does not mean finish your life kill you means dethrone everything until you are left alone this is what men fear because we want something we can find security in i i want to do ministry but let my certificate be there in case it fails i want to love god but let something be there i know that god wants to lift me but uncle be there in case i need you and god says you are not ready for me the law of complete surrender we have a generation whose faith is auxiliary faith it's not pure faith it's not total dependence on god surrender there is nothing in my life today nothing in my life today that i cannot give to god oh if i'm lying may he forgive me but there is nothing in my life koinonia will close down if god says this is the last service it will close down never to open again forever reputation nonsense no never leave where fame met you never leave where lifting met you if it met you on your knees remain there even when you rise don't let men clap you into your doom and destruction David was dancing before the Lord undignified and his foolish wife Saul's daughter said why are you falling your hand paraphrasing why are, do you not know you are now royalty you are still behaving as if you are a shepherd and he said I'm dancing before the God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me so that he will not take it from me and give another listen to me when you die to yourself all of these mundane things i am apostle you just called me joshua very very long time <laughs> hallelujah how am i supposed to behave fly <laughs> i was nowhere when he found me oh i was nowhere when he found me oh thank God for your presence but I will remain where you met me I will remain where you had my teachings I will remain where you saw the miracles 
hold on to the four horns of the earth. don't be embarrassed about your death let everybody who comes let them fly from london from us and meet you still at the place of death you may be inside a jeep but still be dead <laughs> you may be inside a five-star hotel but still be dead the pressure from your company is about to eat you up because it is still your own you see owners take responsibility stewards only maintain while owners take responsibility when you own things in this kingdom you are responsible for keeping it are we blessed you're a minister of the gospel here please listen if your desire is to be a superstar to shine another apostle <laughs> let me advise you very early in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty return back to the secret place and flog it out this night with destiny the secret to fame is to forget about it focus on his presence focus on his presence don't be ashamed to let men know he took you from nothing it's not weakness it's not it, it, you are not insulting yourself no Are we blessed? I marvel at the wonder-working power of God. Literally every day, I see the mighty things that God is doing in and through the lives of people. I am humbled and broken. Sometimes I look at myself and I said, oh dear, oh dear, what God can do with people who die. Death is the price for life. Death is the price for life this is the first you want to be great in this kingdom you want to last you want to be exalted i am telling you go back and flog it with god enter a covenant with god and say no matter how great you lift me i will lift you while people are lifting me you must be the highest it will never be about me thank god for the applauds thank god for the good speaking thank god for all of the great things god is doing around the world but in the name of jesus as an individual and as a ministry may we never get to a point where we push jesus out and we're just holding church but jesus is not there we're doing ministry but he's not there he remains the epicenter the focal point of all that we do let joshua selman go if Jesus remains, we are still intact. Let fame go. If Jesus remains, we are still intact. But let everything remain. If Jesus goes, we are in trouble. Is someone learning now? Yes. I show you why you are not seeing spiritual power. Why certain levels of grace. I know you are fasting for 10 days. You are fasting for 50 days. But already competitive jealousy is the motivation for the fast. You are still alive. You will not find power that way. You want to just speak? May your life change. And people's lives change? It doesn't happen like that. God is not a herbalist. He's not a magician. There are mysteries in this kingdom. This is why men wonder when God continues to lift us. And then they wonder, is it that you don't like fame? You are doing as if you are not enjoying this thing. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised My one desire Is that you be praised That you be praised Listen, let me tell you You have not seen prosperity till you die You have not seen lifting till you die when you really die you will lay up gold as dust you will not know what to do with it all this clamor people are looking for believe me see i tell you this i don't mean to insult your pedigree there are very successful and great people here 
but I submit to you in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty. I have tasted of honor. I have tasted of lifting. I have stood before kings. The person talking to you is not an ignorant person. I count it but dung for the excellency of his presence. When you die to yourself, God will take somebody's prayer request and give you as a gift. What people are chasing after. Now forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. And now forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. One more time. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. You see, I've had the privilege and honor of meeting extremely successful people. Some of them seated here respectfully. And you know the character of exceptional people by the level of humility in their lives. You will almost always confuse them. It is those who don't have anything that make a lot of noise and misbehave. You will see someone who owns estates, owns all kinds of things. And yet a humility almost to a fault. I remember many many years ago in this city very interesting story a dear man I respect so much he took me somewhere to go and bab that was the first time in my life I was going to be paying that kind of money or it to be paid on my behalf for babbing I wanted to say what is it about the babbing I mean give me the clipper I can bab how many what is on my head for that kind of amount I won't tell you how much ah boy it's an amount you must fear God to forget about it For a haircut. <sighs> Very wonderful executive place. And I saw a woman who was moving around trying to find out she would see pieces of paper, papers and pick it on the ground and do a lot of things. I was almost saying, what a diligent staff. And someone tapped me and said, don't say that. That's the owner of the place. I said, uh-huh. That's how you know. You can see someone who owns a mega restaurant, chains of restaurants all across the continent. Oh, you don't have this. There's no water. Just a moment. And they will run and bring it because they are focused on impact, not a name. You have a choice. Focus on your reputation or focus on genuine results. Genuine kingdom results. Please lay your hand on your head and pray and cry in one minute. Father, take away everything that makes me alive in the flesh. Let there be that spiritual circumcision. In the name of Jesus, you watching online, make sure you are following. Pray. I want to engage this law in my life. Absolute surrender. Prune my motive. Prune my motivation. Prune my motive. Prune my motivation. All I desire is Jesus revealed. All I desire is Jesus glorified. In my promotion, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being anointed, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being famous, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. Shalakatu siyakata. Enter a covenant with God. Lord, as you lift me, you are lifted in my life. As you raise me, you are raised in my life. As you promote me, you are promoted in my life. I have no agenda to make a name for myself. My pursuit is not for self-aggrandizement. It is for your kingdom. Hallelujah. 
I submit to you in the name of Jesus sincerely this is my one agenda at the back of everything that I do at the back of everything that I seek is you that I see is you that I see at the center of it all it's you that I see it's you that I see that must become your desire why are you looking for that job why are you seeking to be a billionaire there's nothing wrong with those things in themselves God is not interested in those things he wants to know what is the motive even those who practice occultism these native doctors and these sorcerers who ask them you want money I can give you money but the condition is that there has to be an allegiance that's what they want Satan came to Jesus your Jesus and said I will give you everything just bow to me that's what I want I don't want the money what does Satan do with money listen to me dear people of God there are levels of liftings there are levels of influence there are levels of honor we are yet to tap into the way up is to go down that's how Jesus taught us the Bible says he that ascended he first descended are we blessed this is a principle I've learned one of the mysteries that the Lord gave to me one time the Lord spoke to me and he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you and I vowed that for the rest of my life I will let Jesus be revealed in my life he's the mystery behind the results that you see in this ministry he came to Nicodemus by night and says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things these results you see it is not within the power of a man to do it I know that sometimes we men of God we like to take the glory and to shine and make it look as if it's our intellect is a lie this is the Lord's doing that is why it is marvelous in our sight men cannot go that far in their strength So for your business, forget about the issue of business now. Forget about the issue of fame. Forget about the issue of lifting. Just focus on him and say, Lord, purify my heart sincerely. I confess that somewhere along the lines of my pursuit, I've been motivated by other things. Don't feel guilty. This is why you are in the house of God. I saw that man buy a Jeep and something within me said you are not a failure he was your classmate make sure you get it too I saw my contemporary in ministry demonstrating superior dimensions of power and then I went to fast and said Lord don't embarrass me all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted if we stop here tonight you go back with this understanding and pray and God will tell you this for some of you this is the one is not the devil limiting your rising is that God knows if you rise without hearing this message you will be a disaster first to yourself because no eye has seen no ear has heard let me tell you if it's money you are looking for the God in heaven can daze you in a way that you will sit down and look at money and not know what to do with it believe me as I'm saying it now, some of you are saying, ah, God, you will not give you, you will not answer that prayer until that circumcision happens. Yes, sir. Hmm. 
that God can make any demand in your life and your answer is yes sir give me the car it was yours from the beginning give me the house it was yours from the beginning give me the ministry it was yours give me the reputation I'm only representing your reputation the reason why you can trust the bank with your money is because of ease of withdrawal when you go to withdraw there's no stories God is only able to trust you to the degree to which he can have it back without complaint can he give you greatness and fame and make demand Abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest after 25 years of mockery let me tell you this honestly if it is God you want to do business with no matter how you pray and fast the litmus test of death must happen to you must is a non-negotiable condition if it is greatness in this kingdom you seek there will be a demand something that is so alive in your life must die one day take Isaac offer him as a bond offering I'm not talking money here and Abraham rose up early do you know what that meant to Abraham's family life what was he going to tell his wife what were the newspapers imagine as a journalist interpret what happened in our contemporary world today a very notable prophet of God sacrifices his son that's the caption one million likes one million shares madman commentaries will come from several places the next one month will be the stories of people yet Abraham said I'm willing to risk my reputation that far Romans chapter 4 tells us his contemplations even though he was crying his plan was to kill Isaac and beg God to bring him back to life you read it is in Romans chapter 4 do you know how oil oil that we use for the anointing I hope you know it comes out of olive and it does not just you don't just pluck olive and then oil comes out of it find out how oil is made you have to crush the olive you pass it through a threshing floor or some kind of crushing system and while you look at that olive being crushed you don't even pity it because of the pain you know the end product and out of that crushing oil you want the anointing to heal the sick genuinely not fake miracles you want the anointing to prophesy you want superior grace it won't just come by dropping an offering and hands laid on you no sir there are wells in this kingdom that must be dug through hunger through sacrifice and through death oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh oh yeah yeah Very quickly let's make progress mystery number two Shilama Subrahaskadibalakatusyata I won't dwell so much here because we've dealt with it the second mystery that controls results in this kingdom is called the law of the mind the law of mental transformation the law of mental transformation very powerful spiritual law your life will always be a reflection of your mindset the recommendation that is applicable to us it says go and borrow vessels you don't need to borrow oil but borrow vessels borrow not a few and the Bible says she gathered vessels and then he said you now shut the door and begin to empty it and then 
when she emptied it what happened the moment the vessels were expanding the oil started expanding and the bible says and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing i want to lift you but your mindset is too small for your prayer request if i really answer that prayer you don't have the capacity you see every time people receive more than what their mindset and their hands can hold they waste it and they abuse it the miracle of multiplying five loaf and two fish taught us a lesson these guys were hungry and when multiplication started happening without management multiplication without management led to wastage and they all left and jesus said oh dear mankind here is the lesson go and gather the crumbs so there were baskets to put that crumbs in and when they gathered it it was 12 basket full of wastage if you pour water in a cup it is only the size of the cup you you see that now the size of the cup water will be filled just to that level and every other thing will be a waste so god wants to lift you but in your mind your mind cannot hold more than certain levels of leadership more than certain levels of expansion you may be a pastor and you are saying lord i need you to bless me with members and he says they are all over there are over 7.2 billion people on earth i can bring as many but do you have the enlightenment and the transformation to manage what you are praying for that's why the bible says god answers what we ask or think your mind is a prayer warrior too when your mouth stops praying your mind continues that prayer so when your mouth is saying lord lift me your mindset says lord forget about that lifting i am not ready for it yet both your mouth and your mind are prayer warriors now you see most times in church we don't teach this because it doesn't seem to look very spiritual so we downplay it and we say you just continue to pray and we have people who continue to pray they study scripture and yet they never rise to notable points of influence they are not represented in anything superior i made a vow and a covenant with god that i would never raise a people who are just spiritually accurate spiritually alive I believe in influence and influence happens through transformed mindsets through renewal of the mind are we together now the Bible says they limited God Psalm 78 I believe verse 41 that they limited the Holy One in the wilderness as mighty as God is men can limit him they limited the Holy One could it be that your business can expand more than you have seen could it be that your ministry can expand? You know, I, I told you at the inaugural service of Koinonia, when the Lord spoke to me about coming to Abuja and all of that, I looked at it and I said, well, Lord, that's all right. And he made me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. Till today, they are on my table. I think something like that. And I looked at Abuja in the map and it became very small just six local governments i said i'm well able it became small not small to demean it but i said there is nothing complicated about doing ministry i said it sincerely it would have sounded like arrogance but my mind was receiving it hmm. i believe in the power of a transformed mind your mind is the authorized usher that leads your body to your tomorrow anywhere your mind has not entered the gate will not be open for your body to enter you don't have to fake any living no there's no point faking it your mind does not need a visa to travel with the spirit your mind does not need visa stamped on any passport it can travel while your body is still where it is and go and verify that that tomorrow is there it will come back and usher your body to that realm It's true. The mind of Christ. Superior belief systems. Listen, you have to conquer the spirit of smallness. 
not in a competitive way we already spoke about the law of surrender but small things you do a business you are just thinking of your family members very subsistent living you, he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed god is giving you a vision to have a bank and you are saying no no it's not for us oh dear if your mind defeats you you are defeated completely completely the miracle of a transformed mind is a real miracle you have to be convinced that God is able. I can do all things. It's a superior thinking. Fathers like Bishop David Oyedipko will call it a far above mentality. I've been exalted. Don't let people bully you. We live in a society where people can intimidate you. They look at your shoe and say your shoe is cheap, your dress is cheap, and they make you feel stupid for going through the law of process. Find strength. Your mind is ahead of your body already. Someday, when your body now wears what your mind is wearing, you will see the difference. Do not be ashamed of your journey tomorrow. Don't try to fake anything with honor see success is not what you pursue success is what you attract by who you are becoming more than what you do you attract success by growth sustainable success is attracted by growth not just by doing things when you have grown almost anything can prosper in your hand are you blessed the law of mental transformation when I learned this, I became a student of transformation till the day I see his face. I have gathered materials. I continue to invest in my mind because I don't want to be limited. There is a generation that is depending on your transformation. You cannot afford to be small. All these, all these childish things we do around, you just find someone's car, you go and lie down on it, they will arrest you one day. That's not how to grow hello please don't feel bad but that's not how to grow faith is not foolishness many things that we do in the name of faith that's not faith why fake something that can be real listen i will always give this analogy can you imagine someone who is trying to steal a piece of meat in a pot and just when he's stealing it they caught him and say it was your own the meal was prepared for you now imagine how stupid you will feel stealing what is your own the bible says all things are yours why fake it is your inheritance is your destiny already this is not mere motivation it's true he that cometh from above is above all the Bible says to set your mind and your heart on the things above and not things of the earth. There are things I believe about God. There are things I believe about life. You carry a failure mentality, no matter what kind of prayer is prayed on you, you will fail. I assure you, you will fail. And you will feed your mind back and say, I knew it and you were right. <laughs> Listen to me. I know that there are many people here who aspire to do great things for the kingdom God is not against your greatness he says I will increase your greatness and comfort you round about God is about making us great but listen to me the key is not running around trying to do things settle down and build your mind apostle I don't have capital all I know is God will give me money leave the issue of money the problem is not money the problem is to search for knowledge listen when you start growing in your mind there are some clothes you are wearing that must run away from you because that mindset will drive them away it's not about pride or humility whether you like it or not your there are names in your contact that will start going away when your mind is growing and others will start coming because the level of your transition does not allow to still have those physical conditions if our father in the Lord Baba Deboye comes to stand here now and tells you, ah, 
something happened and my car spoiled some of you who would never give your relatives money for anything immediately right now with one phone call there will be cars lined up as if this is a car stand why because his level of transformation does not allow him to beg at that level again he has no this is a law where is the first phone you bought you can't even remember and you can't remember giving it out your mindset as it was transformed it became incorrect to still hold that kind of phone now i'm not saying holding an expensive phone is necessarily a proof of transformation just as an analogy have you seen someone who sits in a business class you know he's not supposed to be there everything around his life says you are not yet here you are sitting in a business class your shoe is betraying you your you don't know anybody there you don't have relationships that support that level of result it's a physical reality you have not yet arrived in you are holding a rubber ring life will push you back to where your mindset really makes you but when you grow ah, i wish i were not the one teaching this but it is true listen from that one room you can start growing you are learning what is the mentality of great people what does it take to have a great ministry what is the mentality of uncommon leaders not what is their results don't go around admiring people's results and laying on your hands and just claiming claim their mindset you don't need to forget about the result if the mindset is yours the signs that follow that mindset will come listen there are some of you the mindset you have you will never be able to cross one million in your account even if they give you 10 million 9 million would disappear mysteriously through carelessness through whatever and reduce you back to that realm because that is the realm your mind can take believe me every ministry expands to reflect the mindset of the leaders there every business expands to reflect the mindset of the leaders every home expands to reflect the mindset of the parents every nation expands to reflect the mindset of their leaders singapore was turned from a third world nation to a first world nation not because something came from heaven and landed there superior ideas dubai was turned into a heaven yes they've not given their life to christ in as much as we know but they are living on heaven in heaven now as far as paradise is concerned on earth someone can sit down and see a whole sea and yet in it he's seen something else ah, may god give us the miracle of superior belief systems in the name of jesus christ three keys to transit in mentally number one exposure exposure is a powerful blessing exposure is a double-edged sword it can kill and it can make there is a kind of exposure that will sorry to use that word it will rape your mindset you can be exposed wrongly and from that day you will never be patient towards life again but there is a correct exposure what is exposure broadening your horizon opening you up to the possibilities that exist beyond your frame of reference exposure until you watch a miracle if you watch somebody rise from a wheelchair in front of you you will not doubt it again sometimes god lifts us by taking us to places even though we are not really ready for it he keeps you there and you don't know what is happening to you till you leave that place you will be angry with where you are going back to that's a miracle and you make up your mind that in the name of jesus i won't be at this level again jesus was born in nazareth but he refused to allow nazareth live in him at age 12 when his contemporary teenagers were running up and down he was investing in his mind even though he was the son of god as a result in three years he took the world and said i'm done and levitated with honor back to heaven africa we must wake up the problem is not lack of mineral resources the problem is not only leadership leadership is there 
but more than leadership we are victims of our thinking the many years of servitude has done something to us the color of your skin does not have an effect on your mind your background and where you come from does not have an effect on your mind there are no second class citizens on earth except you make for yourself he that cometh from above the moment you receive jesus you are born into a superior class of living this is a fact please make up your mind that you will not be small again make up your mind that you will not be small that what my father did not give me my children will eat it where i could not go you can't transfer the same mediocrity to your children it's okay that okay those who came before you could not go that far don't keep giving flimsy excuses while life is passing you and it does not come by hustling hustling is a demonic strategy work circumspectly as wives hustling is why people don't give god the glory the Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it, but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning, to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but he gives his beloved sleep. We have systems of advantage in this kingdom. We are not left alone. The favor of God is there. The capacity to restore is there. The gift of man, there. The ministry of the Holy Spirit showing you what to do part time. Shout, I cannot fail. Please say it, I cannot fail. I reject failure. Now, if you confess like that and don't contend for transformation, you will soon be angry with what you are saying because it will remain empty talk for a very long time. There are people who have done it for many years. Oh, I will not fail, yet they keep going down confession is powerful but it's not the only key to the success equation content for transformation more than the clothes you buy invest in your mind buy materials superior materials technology has made it very easy for transformation with data of next to nothing you can settle down and watch videos and materials that that are consistent with scripture that edify you get all my teachings on them on mindsets they are free get them go online search for them they are free let the holy spirit do a work you have to understand how the mind thinks i'm sorry to say it but secular education school does not teach people how to think no achievement is a science there are exact equations that produce achievement. Results, you must sustain the ability to replenish. And here's where it lies. So you don't fear your success. I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that the results that we see and we rejoice with, it is ultimately God's doing, but he's given keys. There is no fear in these results because it will remain so. It did not come by magic. It did not come by mistake. It can be replicated anywhere in the world. And it is true. You only fear when your result came by luck. When it comes by knowledge, knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom, you can find rest. Listen, like Abraham, he says, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. I'm speaking to someone by the spirit, from where you are, not where you want to be, from where you are. You can make up your mind. Dr. Miles Munro, my eternally revered mentor, changed my life radically. Was one of the first people the Lord began to use to change my belief system. I love him even in death. Bless his soul. I heard his story. How that he grew up in a family of how many people? And they would look from their room and they could see the stars. That was the level of the poverty and he made up his mind that things would not be this way but empty talk does not lead to results he began to contend for transformation by the truth more than clothes by the truth are we together philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 
verse 8 Philippians 4 verse 8 finally brethren finally koinonia whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just please look up whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things i never go for a meeting wondering will the power of god move will the sick be healed no 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 i have a mentality i never go alone i never go alone though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death thou art with me divine presence is a secret i know that his power his divine power i never come for a meeting wondering will people be blessed we're talking the power of the holy ghost here and the lord walking with them confirming the words with signs following there will never be a week where there is no testimony here it's impossible god must bear witness Oh, 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 I know who I am. Oh, 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 oh. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. It's not a Pentecostal song. It is truth from scripture. The Bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Knowing who you are is not being aggressive and insulting people around. No. That's insecurity. There is a settled confidence. I'm walking in power walking in miracles i expect favor every day every day honestly i really do i expect favor please sit down we have to rush so you must trust god for grace write two scriptures down you can read them when you get home very quickly genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 7 the key verse is verse 5 genesis chapter 11 11 i meant to say genesis 11. just write it and then you go and study at home but this was the story of nimrod kush building that tower whose top will reach the heavens the Bible says, verse 4, since you've projected it, let's just look at 4 and 5 quickly. The Bible says, Nimrod, he began to market this idea. It started with an idea. Let us build a city whose top may reach the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered on earth. Look what happened in the realm of the spirit. Verse 5, while Nimrod was busy working on their minds, the Bible says, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men have finished building once their mindset received it god saw a building rising in the spirit and he came to say what is they've not started building on the ground but their mindset was receiving it everything in life is built twice it is first built in your mind then it is built physically whatever is built physically and not built in your mind you will lose it but destroy anything physical if it's built in your mind the law says it must be rebuilt
it's why wealthy people may go down they may have a season of some catastrophic events financially and otherwise and you see them smiling you are even crying for them and yet they are smiling they who are the victims because they know that they not only sustain the ability to be fruitful they have the ability to replenish you will only fear your results when you do not know the laws that produce it watch this I will always like to use people who cook imagine with me for a moment that you were to go and serve guests and while you were preparing the meal something happened and then everything just poured completely on the floor and then they give you two more hours or three more hours you will not be afraid again because you can still go back to the kitchen once the ingredients are there and you are the one who truly cooked it's trouble if you just bought it somewhere and the place is closed then you are in trouble but if you were the one who prepared it you can go back with confidence and even use the anger to make a better version of that thing and say what i forgot to add yesterday as i'm coming back now i'm adding it there law number three are you getting blessed the third mystery in this kingdom that has been responsible for the uncommon extraordinary results of the saints is called the law of mastery and competence the law of mastery the law of competence write it down please Proverbs 18 and verse 16. A man's gift maketh room for him, and the Bible leaves an assurance that the gift, like an usher, can bring him before great men. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men listen to me it is powerful to be valuable you know what it means to be valuable to be valuable means that you sustain the ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful as far as the context of a civilization is concerned listen carefully not just the ability to provide solutions the solutions must be needed and they must be useful with respect to that civilization you are considered valuable to the degree to which your life and your skills provide solutions as a man of God I'm providing a solution the solution may be spiritual in context but it's still a solution number one I'm connecting you to faith number two I'm using the agency of the Word of God as a reference to transform your thinking your thinking now being transformed will change your life I'm standing in partnership with the Holy Spirit to provide supernatural solutions healings miracles signs and wonders that is value many believers are just waiting for some magic to happen as far as their relevance is concerned let me tell you this men will only come to your light not to you if you are not carrying anything of value nobody will look for you gentiles don't come to you they come to your light let me tell you why you are alone you are alone because there is nothing notable coming out of you that is commanding the attention of men value is powerful You must have something to offer listen the table of greatness was so designed that you don't just go there and shift a chair and sit down the condition to join the great to sit on that table is that you first provide your value then that value is vetted there is a threshold level of competence you must attain in order to be granted a seat with the great being valuable as powerful as it is is not enough the highest position in every organization is for masters competence is a promoter it can lift you beyond your background it can lift you beyond your limitations
it's a kind of music called music of the masters many of you have listened to it those guys have mastered the art of not failing when they sit down and they are playing they have come to a point where they are one with what they are doing they are not hoping they are right oh you must trust god to be a master at something nobody will come and indefinitely be loyal to you for nothing no when you study leadership there is a dimension of leadership that comes by results people want to see results they love you but they love themselves too they want to see genuine replicable consistent results if you're a man of God you must make up your mind that I will be competent I will be competent in ministry word delivery excellent prayer life excellent ethics of ministry administration and managerial intelligence excellent refuse to be small value is powerful when I learned this I began to rejoice I found my way out of mediocrity I found my way out of jealousy I found my way out of competition mastery lifts you to such a pedestal in life you are so distinguished it will look like life is flattering you but it's true let me tell you this I learned this and for the purpose of this discussion tonight I want you to write it down that the kingdom of God operates based on a reward system the kingdom of God operates based on a reward system and there is an auxiliary law that is tied to the law of competence the law of value the law of mastery I want to quote it for you so that you have it down and I pray that it will contribute to your lifting and your rising are you ready that the rewards that we have in life the rewards that we have in life is directly proportional to three things the rewards that we have in life is directly proportional to three things number one the need or the demand for what you do your rewards our rewards in life is directly proportional to number one the need or the demand for what we do number two our ability or proficiency to do what we do this is where skill and excellence comes in your ability to do what you do and then number three the difficulty in replacing you I come again our rewards in life financial honor whatever kind of reward whether financial or psychic whatever kind of reward will always be in exact ratio in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do number two your ability to do what you do number three the difficulty in replacing you when there are easy replacements for you you will never go far in life this is not from a competitive standpoint but you must make up your mind to be exceptional it is true that no man is indispensable but make it difficult to find an alternative to you and the company will retain you begging I assure you as much as they are downsizing people in this nation there are people who will not spend one month without a job they are too competent for that kind of condition they literally are the brains behind many corporations many years ago I used to know a gentleman he was working three jobs and he was only working three or four times a week he used to live in Kaduna state but he worked in Lagos and the company would fly him every week he was an IT consultant if he coughs I think they'll buy him a, a pharmacy not a drug listen you must be so valuable and you must be so competent there is a measure of honor that only comes to masters I made up my mind and you've heard me say it I don't have an ambition to learn and know everything 
and to be exceptional in everything but in the areas where god has called me i made a covenant with myself and my life that i will stretch myself to a point of uncanny mastery in ministry in leadership every grace that is available for signs and wonders i will contend for it by light thank god for that which is given me but i will not rest and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you listen you are a music you are a, you are a worshiper you are a music artist don't just sing and be looking for those who know you to keep recycling you around a day will come they will be tired of you because there will be too many alternatives you must trust god for illumination you must trust god for mastery learn at the feet of masters rise to a point where your songs don't die you are a businessman don't say i'm doing business they are not patronizing me oh i'm a chef who can place a demand for you until you serve kings you cannot receive the reward of kings if koinonia only provides value to people who are outside of politics and governance and business respectfully speaking and with every sense of responsibility then you will never be able to mentor kings and bless people the truths that are being dished out from here must be such that all and sundry can be benefactors of it truths that are consistent with scripture proven by the life of exceptional people exceptionally com communicated backed up by the power of the holy ghost like fire into your spirit you carry that truth and you can run with it competence make up your mind to be competent in the name of jesus you're a man of god make up your mind to be competent one headache per year you are not you'll be ready for empty pews not in the times that we live in you want to come and sing and you say don't worry don't worry about the wordings or is it is it the melody just focus on the wordings then recite a poem recite a poem are we together yes i know that we all start gradually but make up your mind can i tell you this don't come and stand in front of the stage when you are not prepared you can relax with honor don't embarrass yourself relax with honor and train and train and make that mistake the stage is not for training it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you. Apostle, I'm tired of this level. Then rise through competence. I'm tired of this level. Rise to serve kings. I'm tired of this level as a man of God. The key is not to ask people to come to listen to you. The mere fact, listen, a mango tree does not call you. It just produces fruits big and juicy a few months you pass the same tree as if you didn't see it now look at the skill you have to employ because of the, the the gift on it you use stones you use a rod you even climb it the tree never said you should be that desperate for it it only produced fruits i tell you why people are ignoring you there is nothing of there is nothing notable in your life you don't come to a tree that is not producing anything ask jesus your jesus jesus came to a tree that had green leaves and no fruit he didn't just advise it and say next year make sure that he cost it that's what men will do when you attract men to your presence and you have nothing to offer before you ask men come make sure the table is ready let all things be ready before you call men for a feast don't call for a miracle service when you've not contended for the grace for healing when they are not healed they will say i'm not healed don't call people to teach and then you are sharing things and sharing things and they go back and use the truth you're communicating and there's no results in their lives there is nobody who lives what works at the instance of results results are magnetic they can keep men there keep them in your company 
not by telling lies the greatest way to market is to tell the truth you have no fear when it is truth nothing to hide nothing to stage manage it is true if i tell you god will lift you believe me he will lift you if i tell you god is is shifting you it will happen because if he did not say it i don't have any business repeating you are only afraid if you speak on your own please make up your mind that you're going to be competent believe us let us not bring reproach to the name of jesus let us go back and do our homework in music in business in politics in leadership buy the truth and sell it not hallelujah every time i finish a meeting like this when i go back home sincerely speaking maybe just rest refresh a bit i'm getting straight to my work as i'm preaching here right now i have my own assignments and i have things i'm doing I return from a meeting straight to this place and when i'm done not even my tiredness is an excuse there is a generation that is depending on my competence there are people on wheelchairs right now who are depending on my contending for that power it is more than what you want don't prophesy nonsense everything you say is not correct don't say it's just god testing me go back and do your homework your name is john no i'm israel you have two children no i have ten you are coming from Abuja. I'm coming from outside this country. Abba, that margin of error is too human. You can't blame God for it. I made up my mind that I will never stand before anybody in this life and be intimidated to a point of shame. I will be challenged. I will be provoked unto godliness but never that i stand before anyone i found out the difference between you and anyone is number one your level of enlightenment number two the relationships that come at that enlightened level number three the grace that is at work on your life that's what separates people anybody you ever admire this is what separates him from you can kings stand to applaud you can the great look at you and say i am impressed he behaves like us or can they show you the door and say go out there and never come back again joseph was prepared he knew he was ready to stand before pharaoh i'm sure when joseph was leaving the prison he looked at those who were there and said gentlemen i'm coming for you but no longer as a prisoner i know that when i meet the king it's impossible for the king to have this kind of competence before him and send me back to the prison and here's how he did it he said let the king search for a man it's a diplomatic way of saying i dare you search the entire egypt if you will find a man you've been here sweating for hours and they brought me out of prison don't trivialize my value search for the entire egypt if you will find a man who will interpret your dream listen at the instance of competence without consulting with kingmakers and elders he became the prime minister so there are times that competence can compress time and in a moment enthrone you someone can look at you and without an interview just a five minutes conversation he says come and be the nigerian representative of my company come and be the african representative of my company and you are like it's a joke sorry sir are you joking and he says does it sound like i'm joking you have what i'm looking for do you have what the world is looking for do you have what the world is looking for there are consultants and specialists today that are being flown from us being flown from uk from india to come and perform surgical procedures on certain people why because they are masters there are authorities global authorities in certain fields before you go so far you have they have to vet what you are writing is that true no matter where you are if you want to be initiated to this realm of greatness 
you must pass through their tutelage they look at what you're saying and say no adjust this adjust that may you be a master the level of mastery that drives shame from your life that you have a restaurant that will make people come and sit down there as though they were bound with a spell what is it about your food i found a secret africa we love superstition god is a miracle worker but he's not a magician it will take competence to attract honor it will take competence to attract the goodwill of people nobody will clap for you indefinitely for doing nothing your assignment go back to the drawing board your assignment create a drawing board if you do not have one don't clap for yourself for too long you've heard me say it here that no one claps for you for the same thing twice when they clap for you once that's enough for that realm if you don't do anything higher nobody will applaud you for it again are we blessed I made up my mind to bring glory to Jesus through my life not just through my prayers not just through my fasting but through competence that anywhere he would have me serve his purposes any church I have the opportunity to minister in or here in Koinonia that by the grace of God I will never waste your two three four hours it will never be that you come for any Koinonia meeting and at the end of it you are frowning and say I just wasted my time I would have done something else it will be evil of me to come and waste your precious time many of you are veterans in business you are captains over many why will you come and sit down here for hours and then learn nothing and just jump around and laugh and share the grace that's not the God we serve by the grace of God you will never sit here and go back with regret no that whilst you sit down here quality life applicable information will come to you that is applicable both in your spiritual life and your secular environment and then the engracing from the spirit this is what makes it more than a lecture a lecture stops in the realm of your mind but there is an anointing an unction that backs every truth maybe i should say this as we prepare to round up many years ago the lord showed me a very very interesting revelation i was caught up in the realm of the spirit listen carefully and then i saw a very big door very giant gate and then in it it was made up of smaller doors and on every door a scripture was written i noticed it was that smaller doors were opening and closing opening and closing and every time they open light would just come from them and i wondered what i was seeing and i was saying lord what is this and then the lord told me every time you catch a revelation in scripture the grace dimension to defend that truth is that light that is released so any truth you cannot validate with your life is not yet a revelation to you no matter how long you have talked about it there is always grace given to the saints to defend the truths that we communicate and the lord walking with them confirming the word the word with signs following the law of absolute surrender the law of mental transformation the law of competence and mastery can you lend me 10 more minutes let's talk about the fourth law and then we pray very quickly the law of faith the fourth spiritual law that is responsible for the excelling of the saints in this kingdom is the law of faith mark 11 please from verse 22 to 24 just summarize it quickly and then we'll pray my spirit is fired up and Jesus answering saith unto them have faith in God original translation says have the faith of God it says verily verily I say unto you whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith 24 therefore koinonia i say unto you what things soever ye desire hallelujah when ye pray 
believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them hebrews 11 says now faith is the substance of things that i hope for he calls it the evidence of things not seen the evidence of things not seen the evidence of things not seen please permit me to just use money for an example watch this the evidence of things not seen this is a hundred dollar bill please come watch this he wants to buy say maybe he wants to buy this are we together now and it is a hundred dollars if i give him this i didn't give him the book but i gave him the substance of what he's hoping for this is the evidence that he can go to the shop and purchase it are we together now this is what he wants to buy it is not the money he wants but the moment i gave him hundred dollar he started smiling it's as good as having it because he can go to the person go to them that sell and buy that's what the parable of the virgins once you have the ability to buy them that sell will not hinder you so this is it and he comes to the person who sells and drops this and picks this so this was not supposed to remain just as money are we together now eventually i should see you holding this if you hold this forever something is wrong you it is either fake money or you don't know where to meet them that sell the moment you hold this you shouldn't just start jumping yes rejoice that you have it but don't stop there go to them that sell and exchange it for the real substance so the bible says faith is the substance of what you hope for the evidence that although it is not here i have the purchasing power to get it listen the house is not yet there but i have the substance this is the evidence that it is going to be mine the lifting has not yet appeared but this is the evidence now in this kingdom the currency is the word of God this is it instead of giving you this mundane piece of paper that when you tear it you cannot go to CBN and say I was holding real money it's gone this is it this is the instrument we use to purchase possibilities in this kingdom every time you find truth it's like money being given to you there is an exchange system in the realm of the spirit you carry that truth this mysteries i'm teaching you now is like dashing you money because you are soon going to carry these truths you are learning there are them that sell don't worry you will go to work tomorrow you will go around and you will start seeing them that sell all around your destiny helpers are them that sell the moment you meet them you will exchange these mysteries for lifting for favor everything in this kingdom is bought but you must know the currencies that we used to buy with in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was with god in the beginning john 1 says it says and without him it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made listen to me very quickly i asked for 10 minutes faith is based on two qualities of god there are two major qualities of god that produce bible faith number one his integrity numbers 23 and verse 19 very quickly please numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 believers read with me ready one to read god is not a man uh-huh neither the son of man that he should repent had he said and shall he not do it or had he spoken and shall he not make it good please look up the bible says god is not a man 
there is a weakness in all men we lie You don't lie because you are bad. You lie because you are human. So he says, God is not a man that he should lie. He became a man, but he is not a man. If God is a man, he must worship who created him. He is not a man. He became a man. Are we together? The Bible says when God says a thing, you can trust him. He will make it good. Everybody say integrity. The word integrity comes from the word integer, sameness. As within, so without. Sameness. When you say God is a God of integrity, that means there is consistency, dependability. When he says, I will lift you, he will not turn tomorrow and say, no, I will change my mind. Provided the conditions that make for the delivery of that promise is met and kept, he is true to his word. So the first quality of God that Bible faith depends on is his integrity. You want to deal with someone you know will not play games with you. God does not do April Fool. No. When he tells you, I will lift you, he really means it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass, the Bible declares, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all his commandments which I command you this day. He says that the Lord will set thee on high above the nations of the earth. And then he says that all these blessings shall come on thee and shall overtake you. There is a condition. I'm the God of integrity. I am able to do that. God is dependable. He's a God of integrity. The first quality of God that Bible faith depends on is his integrity. You must have a revelation of God's integrity. When he sends you and tells you, I will be there with you, trust him. Trust him. Even when you do not see him, trust him. Are we together? Integrity. He does not change. When God speaks to me, I believe him. When he sent me to this city, he assured me of his divine presence and I believed him. I came because I believed him. Nobody signed any form and said, I'm coming. No. Faith. He said it. I believe. Where will the money come from for the bills? It will come through the voice that spoke where will the people to listen come from the word will bring them i know that god is a god of integrity you can trust him you can trust him i know that men have failed you they promised to do a they did b they promised to do x they did y but god is not like that when he says a thing he has the power to do it imagine the things he told you this year that this is your year of victory you must believe it is true imagine the thing he told you this year that when men say there is a casting down for you it will be that there is a lifting up you have to believe him he told you this year would not end with you crying like other years why are you now doubting his integrity God is not scratching his head, wondering how to defend his name in your life. He's the almighty God. He's able to do it. Number two, the second quality of God that our faith depends on is his ability. There are people that have integrity, but they do not have ability. I can help you, but sincerely, I don't have the money. He has integrity. And the person he's standing with will say it's true. He's like that. Honestly, if he has money, he will give you. So his integrity is not in doubt. But there is no ability. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him who has ability. He does not just have integrity. Listen carefully. He has ability to do there are people who want to give you jobs. They have integrity, but they do not have ability. There are people who want to lift you. 
they will tell you just pray for me if i really become the director i will not let you suffer they have integrity but when it has to do with performance you need more than integrity you need ability god is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think and he does that according to the power that works in us everybody say god is able one more time prophesy say god is able don't be in doubt whether he can lift you apostle god said he will honor me where will the resources come from ask the raven where it got bread and came and fed elijah in the night this is god he can make anything out of anything so he has integrity and he has ability based on the awareness of his integrity and his ability you can now believe him what does it mean to believe him to count him as true then what do you do the next thing you do listen carefully listen carefully this is where many people miss it out believing is not faith believing is only part of the faith equation if all you do is believe you are not walking in faith Just because you have rice does not mean you have fried rice. Rice is a major ingredient, but not the only ingredient. Just because you have salt does not mean you have a well-prepared meal. Believing is only one of the equations to faith. Listen to me. The foundation of Bible faith, hinging on God's integrity and his ability, is the awareness of the promises and the instructions that your blessings are connected to the awareness of the promises the awareness of the instructions that your promises or your blessings are connected to here's how it works every commitment of god in the scripture there is a condition every blessing in scripture there is a condition a participatory condition that must be met your condition is not necessarily adding to what Christ has done but it's a participatory condition if 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 you want to prosper find out the biblical conditions that make for prosperity subscribe to it with all your heart having this at the back of your mind that at the back end of your obedience is a God of integrity and the God of of ability you only have the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete now there's a lot of blind believing God in the body of Christ and believing God for this and believing God for this you will keep jumping like that forever respectfully speaking now there are conditions the Bible is full of prophecies the Bible is full of principles. The Bible is full of promises. When you walk through your Garden of Eden, that's this Bible. You search for the things God said he would do and search for the conditions connected to them. You want to prosper, there are conditions attached. You are only manifesting faith when, number one, you believe that God has integrity and ability. Then you find out the economic system of the kingdom, the principles that make for the blessing of the saints. Then you obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with those conditions. Only when you act out in obedience is God committed to you. Are we together? It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. I read that scripture already. The Bible says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. The Bible says, A diligent hand shall be made fat. We just read it here that a valuable person will attract the attention of kings, the gift of a man. So don't sit down and say, God, prosper me. He's saying you walk in keeping with the principles that release that dimension of the blessing. When you walk in keeping with the principles connected to any blessing, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop you from entering that inheritance. This is called the law of faith. Are we together? We are going to pray. John 
11 and 14. John 11 and 40. We have to close quickly and pray. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto you, that if thou shalt believe, you will see the glory of God. This is what confuses a lot of people. Just because Jesus said believe, you have to examine the word that was translated believe there. He did not just mean if you are aware that I'm able to do it. No, no. If you are convicted and then you act in keeping with the truths and the instructions that I give you, there is an assurance that you will see the glory of the Lord. Let me wrap up tonight then by defining faith. This is my definition of faith. That faith is the name given to the action that you take. Faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word. Faith is the name given to the action, not the conviction. The action you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of this person. Faith is the action you take as an obedient response to divine instructions and divine principles. Write that down. Faith is the action that you take based, you take to, what did I say now? It was from my mind. In response, the action you take in response to divine instructions and divine principles is called faith. One more time, the action you take in response to divine principles and divine instructions. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. The action is called faith. I will lift you. I believe. What are the conditions? Be diligent. When you are diligent, that diligence is called faith. Are we blessed? I've shared with you tonight four kingdom mysteries. Please do not forget them. I want you to listen to this teaching again and again. You'll find it free on YouTube. Go to our page, Koinonia Global. A YouTube page, you can listen again and again. Go through all our social media pages. It's been broken down for you to listen again and learn. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and the hearing that produces understanding. Open up your heart. By the grace of God, next week we are going to finish up the remaining mysteries. And you will hold them like keys and you can tell the gate of destiny i am ready open up open up open up i will last because i've surrendered everything i will not become mediocre because my belief systems are superior i will not be left out in life because i am competent and i am valuable and then i will not be a victim I'm not just a sociological being, a homo sapien. I relate with the divine through the law of faith. These are irrefutable keys to an excelling lifestyle. Please rise up on your feet. We're wrapping up. I'm on my way to better days. on my way to better days status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days prophesy status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days I'm on my way, on my way, I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way, on my way, on my way to better days. You're on your way. 
on your way you're on your way to better days now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them please turn it into a prayer lord the grace to apply my life to these mysteries i obtain from heaven please lift your voice and pray the grace the grace the grace we're wrapping up lift your voice and obtain grace from heaven the grace to lay down the grace to sustain a superior belief system the grace for mastery and competence the grace to be valuable the grace to live by faith he says the just shall live by faith I'll never be the same, never be the same in the name of Jesus, revealing Jesus, bringing glory to his name, exploits by the spirit, exploits through knowledge, exploits through understanding. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Listen, the Bible says the word is the seed the parable of the sower as soon as the word was sown the bible says satan cometh immediately those that fall on good ground he said are those who understand not just those who hear i assure you one day you will lock yourself at home and you will stand before your mirror with tears coming down your face and say thank you this is a system of insurance this is a bailout system the cure to mediocrity the cure to a life of competition and jealousy you found your way i like you to obtain grace one more time and say lord grace to do grace to do i will do this i will do this i will practice it by the spirit i will practice it by the spirit it will cost my life to excel i will practice it by the spirit hallelujah praise the lord please lend me two minutes and as a body of believers here and following online i like us to lift up nigeria in a prayer in one minute we are responsible believers and the church has a role to play in the stability of any nation we are responsible leaders we can lend our voice to the heavens we must cry to god and say lord help us we humble ourselves and we ask for help we have stretched our intellect we've stretched what we know to do we need divine strategies lift your voice and pray pray for the government pray for members of parliament declare peace upon our nation lend your voice in prayer lend your voice to prophesy we pray for the peace of jerusalem it says they shall prosper that love you lord grant peace peace to our children peace in abuja peace in the north peace in the south peace in the east peace in the west in the name of jesus let the voice of violence be far from our habitation we pray for wisdom direct our leaders in the name of jesus grant us selflessness to lead this nation with wisdom grant the grace to look beyond our personal benefits 
and lead a nation where peace and justice will reign in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus very quickly you are here and you are saying apostle I want to hand over my entire life to Jesus I came to church because I was invited I came because there is a hunger and a longing in my heart for Jesus whether you are here in the main auditorium or all of the overflows down to the basement outside anywhere I know our time is gone but we cannot compromise on the mandate for the global harvest just two minutes for you wherever you are I'd like you to boldly leave your seat and come stand here it's my joy and my honor to leave to lead you to Jesus you are saying apostle I gave my life to Jesus Christ but for some reason things have gone haywire in my life don't be ashamed don't wait for someone to come be the first to come take that bold step let's celebrate them as they come Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? All those in the overflows, just walk to your screen. Just walk to your screen. You may not have the time to come to the main auditorium. All those in the overflows, down to the basement, outside, following online. I'd like you to connect as I lead God's people in prayer. If you're still joining them, come quickly. Be bold. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for making this very bold decision. I'd like you to lift your right hand. All of you here, lift it to Jesus. All in the overflow, do same. Lift your hands to Jesus. Those following online in your room, your office, your car, just watching from your device, you can lift your hands right there. Jesus is there. I want you to pray this prayer loud say after me lord jesus you're joining them join them very quickly say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god tonight i have heard your word i surrender everything to you i receive forgiveness of sin i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare from tonight until forever i belong to jesus i am a child of god in jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you thank you for this once the bible declares that whosoever will come to you you will in no wise cast away they have come with hearts open they have come with hearts repentant I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for that which you have done. I commend them to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That they be established, that they be grounded in righteousness. I pray that they will go forward ever and backward never. And according to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that God gives you a new beginning. In Jesus name I pray. Congratulations. Um, I want all of you to follow there's a gentleman waving a placard just waving to you please all of you follow them same with the overflows just follow them they will have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat koinonia celebrate them <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord amen so let me advise very quickly please after service as much as possible do well to just exchange pleasantries as fast as you can and then do well to reach for your homes um, we close early today because we have to work with uh, the injunction, the curfew. As you know, we have curfew by 12 midnight and we do not want to keep both our precious members and the workers here late more than necessary. And so I hope that you bear with us when and if the protocol department, if they seem to cut away some of the people who may want to wait behind to see me i apologize i know that so many people may want to see me but please we may make it another time praise the name of the lord aside from a few of our guests and a few special cases as much as possible just go home rejoicing with what you have heard and the lord will bless you in the name of jesus christ are we good on that let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god 
the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen god bless you and see you on sunday dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the vision to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kate kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 